Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from eFoods Direct, redefining the way you think about storable food. Now, we've created a menu of food that is so good, so easy to make, that you'll find yourself eating it every day, even though it has a shelf life of up to 25 years. eFoods Direct is offering 10% off to all Liberty Beat listeners. Go to eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat or call 800-620-5520 and mention Liberty Beat for your savings today. In the news, Germany and Brazil are the driving force behind a new version of an anti-data collection resolution the United Nations passed last year. Reuters reports the new version of the resolution calls mass surveillance and collection of metadata a violation of the rights to privacy and a hindrance to free expression. According to documents released by Edward Snowden, Brazil and Germany were both the victim of invasive surveillance from foreign governments, including the United States. The Associated Press has reported on newly released emails in which Attorney General Eric Holder states that federal prosecutors who criticized him and the handling of Operation Fast and Furious could, quote, kiss my ass. The Department of Justice released emails to the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee last week. The emails provide a glimpse into how Holder and other officials dealt with the unfolding of the Fast and Furious investigation and critical reporting from the press. On Friday, an unidentified man came to South Austin, Texas gun store, Central Texas Gun Works, in search of ammunition and a handgun. What employees and owner Michael Cargill soon discovered was that the man had a very specific purpose for the purchase. After filling out required paperwork for a background check, the man purportedly told Cargill he planned to use the weapon and ammunition to kill people at a hospital minutes away. Central Texas Gun Works took action and called police, who later detained the man and questioned him. While there has been no further information about the identity of the mysterious man or what conclusions may come from the investigation, Cargill told Fox News the stranger identified himself as an agent of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Liberty Bee is made possible by Marjorie Wildcraft's Grow Your Own Groceries, homegrown food on every table. That's growyourowngroceries.org. And support also comes from The Corey Moore Show, Liberty-Minded, Comedy-Focused, and live every Friday night at 10 o'clock Eastern. The Corey Moore Show at CoreyMooreShow.com. This is The Liberty Beat for Monday, November 10th, 2014. Check out the website at TheLibertyBeat.com and like us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash TheLibertyBeat. Following the firing of Nuclear Squadron Commander Colonel Carl Jones last week and the firing of General Michael Carey, Chief of All Nuclear Operations last year, management of the United States nuclear weapon system has come under severe scrutiny. In a scathing opinion piece published by the Associated Press, writer Robert Burns asserts America is in severe decline as a nuclear power. The government's lack of support for properly maintaining and updating its nuclear arms operations evidences its demise. Some who have analyzed the current nuclear system believe that the United States government may no longer be able to keep up the network of technology and personnel required for safely handling its massive nuclear arsenal. Since the arms race began in the 1940s, nine nations have detonated over 2,053 nuclear explosions on the planet Earth. The so-called 20th hijacker of the 9-11 attacks, Zacharias Moussaoui, has notified a U.S. district judge that he wanted to testify about the involvement of the Saudi royal family in financing the attacks. Moussaoui claimed he had information on financial support from the Saudi bin Laden group, the Arab Bank, Saudi American Bank, the National Commercial Bank of Saudi Arabia, and other individuals. The request to give testimony came during a lawsuit filed by family members of the victims. The Liberty Bee is sponsored by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That number again, 800-686-2237. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, November 10th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. This is the Onion Week in Review. Poets across the nation issued a statement Thursday announcing that shadows, inky sharp as the raven's beak, meet the clouds like dusty charcoal on an ashen brow. Citing the ageless gloom of morning and a weary sun, its astral luminescence wrapped in arid gauze, the report noted that doubt lingers in the frail minutes of a young dawn. For what is the sound of hope? For what is life's moment of fulfillment? 
The supple lie of spring prolongs the inquisition. Father! Father! Do you not sense the dread of autumn's looming song danced in trembling half-step? One, two, one, two. The poets later added, womb, womb, womb. And in local news, a sad sack is bullied by an area goose. In other news, a photographer specializes in those pictures where lights going by really fast look like lines. An entree is apparently the kind you squeeze lime over. And employees finally get that break room bathtub they wanted. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want. All you have to do, dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you in the studio tonight, you have Ian here. Derek J. And Mark. And don't forget to join us online. Just drop on by freetalklive.com and do enjoy the features that we share with you there, those other talk show hosts. Many of them want to charge you for their sites. Ours is free, so enjoy. Freetalklive.com. You can vote on the different news stories and things that have been submitted to the site. It's a Reddit-based system. It's free to use, so go and enjoy at freetalklive.com. Last week, uh, we had a guy call in from California. It was Of all people, it was uh, Pugnacious Pete who called in to bring up, because we were talking about um, on Wednesday, I think it was, we were talking about some of the ballot initiatives that had passed versus had not passed. So, for instance, Florida did not, uh, by about two percentage points, did not pass the medical marijuana uh, oh. ballot initiative. Yeah, they had 58 percent. They needed 60 percent. Um, but uh, the marijuana did go through in uh, legalized marijuana, went through in Alaska as well as Oregon. D.C. voted for it, but that still has to go through the Congress in order for that to be approved, and that's questionable. You basically to... got legalized marijuana on the entire West Coast of the United States. Yep, that's correct. You do basically have that now. Um, so, well, the, with the exception of California, where they only well, have medical. But California, you can go to any just about any doctor, and it doesn't even have to be like a a MD doctor, somebody calling themselves a doctor um, and say, I've got back pain. That's true. The it's most, not hard to get it. Then. The most common affliction in the United States or whatever. I yeah. have trouble sleeping. Um, and you can get a prescription for marijuana. Yeah, that is true. So Pete had called in to ask if we were going to talk about Proposition 47. And I said, well, I don't know what that is. It's not here on my list of things. You know, I had some mainstream media article about some of the more popular ballot initiatives. And arguably, this is one of the most important ones that, that I've heard about. So was, I'm really grateful that he brought that to my attention because I found out more about it after the fact. Does that mean that there were 46 other initiatives, at least, that people had to read through and vote oh, on? I have no idea. I think it cycles in some way. Yeah, I don't That sounds know like what, a lot to follow. I don't know what the rules are out there, but uh, it's certainly true that in places like California, if you get enough signatures, you can get something on the ballot. Uh, it's not hard. It's well, I'm not gonna say it's not. I'm not gonna say it's not hard to do, but it's something that if you've got enough money, you can make it happen. That's cool. I think generally people do a better job when issues are put up to a vote. And the voters, you mean? Vote, yeah, voters do a better job when they get to vote on a single issue. Not in Rather Florida. Than, yeah, I hated well, it in Florida because basically everything. Well, let's give that a shot. Um, they would just passed. vote yes to everything, yeah. except of course legalizing yeah, marijuana, not, where not, people are being harmed every single day in their state. But you know, hey, pigs need an extra three square feet to live in, or something like that. Or oh, I, you know what? You know what would be a good idea if somebody else built a uh, super fast choo choo that ran from Orlando to Miami. Why in the heck are we voting on this? It's a little bit better than choosing other people to to decide on those things. Yeah. yeah. So when you poll a bunch of uninformed ignoramuses, then you <laughs> expect to get uh, you know really bad legislation. Here's a story from vice.com, one of the uh, the best sites on the internet for alternative sort of news, uh, independent news. Anyway, vice.com reporting that California has just become the first state to defelonize drug use. Woo! Huge, huge news. Uh, on Tuesday, Californians voted on ballot proposals surrounding issues like water supply, health insurance, and state budget reform, but none of them garnered the same level of national interest as Proposition 47, the criminal justice reform initiative that promised to thin out the state's saturated prisons by reducing six classifications of nonviolent drug and theft-related crimes from felonies to misdemeanors. 
The measure passed, and California will now become the first state to defelonize nearly all accounts of drug possession with the intent of personal use. Mm. California is now leading the nation in this regard as extraordinary. Along with Texas, the Golden State has been the archetype of United State of the United States prison boom since the war on drugs began escalating incarceration rates decades ago. Prison populations in 2010 were 735% of what they were in 1969, while the state's residential population only grew by 192% across the same period. Even so, Proposition 47's success comes as little surprise to those who have been following the state's prison woes closely. Over the past decade, California has been under pressure from the federal government to shrink its inmate population and alleviate unconstitutional prison conditions. The state tried mitigating the issue by exporting nearly 8,500 inmates to penitentiaries in Oklahoma, Arizona, and Mississippi. Yeah. What? But Yeah, Why? crazy. <laughs> but even after this transfer, local prison populations continued to hover between 120% and 150% of their intended capacity. By the way, the uh, the cruelty of sending somebody off to some other place to be incarcerated. They can't have their loved ones come visit them very easily. Right, and... and like, I understand the concept, let's make prison as uncomfortable as possible for people. I get that. But when you do that over the course of years, what you're not, what you, 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 you cease to, fe- to teach a lesson. And in fact, what you're teaching is bitterness. Mm-hmm. Um, well, prison's I, supposed to reform in theory. Well, that's the, the idea. But, you know, there's, there's this window of, of whatever you can do to correct or reform or uh, rehabilitate. And then if you go beyond that window, whatever that window might be, if you go beyond it, essentially what you're doing is you're creating uh, – you're, you're, you're deep-seating hate and, and vengeance and bitterness. And we can see what happens when that occurs. Leads to the dark side. It leads to the dark side. In 2012, more than 68% of voters agreed to water down California's contentious three strikes law, which put anyone with three felonies, violent or nonviolent, in prison for life. This indicated a major shift in the public conscience, and it dismantled the foundation of the state's tough-on-crime mantra that was approved by nearly three-quarters of voters during Bill Clinton's presidency in 1994. So it sounds to me like the three strikes law was voted in by people via ballot initiative. And I wouldn't then doubt it. Voted out by people via ballot initiative. Hey, they had to find out if they liked it or not. Oh, God. <laughs> these, these moves have already started sifting nonviolent offenders out of state prisons, but Proposition 47, the one that just passed, will raise depopulation efforts to a new level. Along with defelonizing most counts of drug possession, it gives at least 10,000 inmates without a history of violent or sexual crime the potential to challenge their sentencing. There's a, there's a crime that is sexual but not violent? Uh, yeah, that would be a statutory rape, I would think. Okay. Uh, by increasing, I, but I mean, the, statutory rape essentially the idea is is that you force somebody because they're un- incapable of saying yes. That's the concept behind well, what, statutory what about rape. Exhibitionism. Yeah, the, mm. exhibitionism might be one. Yeah. So by increasing the felony threshold of nonviolent acts like shoplifting and purchasing stolen goods to nine hundred and fifty dollars, it more than doubles California's previous limit for imprisonable theft crimes. The proposal's success augurs a massive shift in our understanding on how to heal. When it comes to exhibitionism, this this never really understood. So if you have a coat and you flash somebody, that's exhibitionism. If you run uh, through a football game naked, it's lighthearted streaking, right? I mean, what's the difference here? You have to be funny. If it's funny, it's okay. (laughs) If it's scary, (laughs) that's pervy. It's not okay. Uh, so the proposal sh- uh, augurs a massive shift in our understanding of how to heal, not bandage crime and prison issues. It'll create a Safe Neighborhoods and Schools Fund, which plans to take the estimated $700 million to $1.25 billion saved from incarceration reform and invest it in government schools and convict rehabilitation programs. Tackling prison glut while maintaining public safety doesn't mean simply revisiting law structures. It means... You know, we have (laughs) government schools in all 50 states and incarceration, you know, like investment in government schools went up, up, and up as incarceration went up, up, and Mm -hmm. up. I don't know that this is... The government schools are, in fact, the solution to incarceration. Uh, Incarceration at public schools is at 100%. (laughs) <laughs> well, this is California. I mean, they can't just take the $1.25 billion they're going to save and give it back to the taxpayers. In a lot of cases, the people that they're um, you know, incarcerating aren't going to make—they don't have a lot of earning potential anyway. 
Toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. So on a national level, Proposition 47 is a watershed moment because it adds major weight to a push for criminal justice reform that's already seen 30 states restructure their laws since 2007. Michigan, Alabama, Tennessee, and Utah may soon join California and raise that number to 35. Task forces in those states are currently looking into local prison issues and are likely to try out reform initiatives as early as 2015. In other words, more than half the country with the highest incarceration rate in the world is finally recognizing the need to rethink what it means to be criminal. 855-450 free. More coming up here in moments. Free Talk Live. Did you know by age 50, half of all men have an enlarged prostate? This means more urges to urinate, longer bathroom trips, waking at night to urinate, or issues with sex. If this sounds familiar, call us now, because we're shipping free bottles of Super Beta Prostate to listeners of this station. Super Beta Prostate is a non-prescription formula guaranteed to reduce the symptoms of your enlarged prostate. It's yours free. Pay only shipping and handling. Just call 1-800-856-4195. In clinical trials, the ingredient in Super Beta Prostate was shown to reduce urges to urinate, improve bladder emptying, reduce waking at night to urinate, and improve quality of life. This Super Beta Prostate-free offer is for listeners of this station, but it won't last. Don't wait. Just call 1-800-856-4195. That's 1-800-856-4195. Call 1-800-856-4195. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power, a gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. I am a non-attorney spokesperson. Attention men who've taken Androgel or any other testosterone therapy products. Androgel or other low-T products have been linked to heart attack, stroke, pulmonary embolism, deep vein thrombosis, even death. Scientific studies indicate that the use of testosterone therapy products may double a man's risk of heart attack. If you or a loved one took Androgel or a testosterone therapy product and suffered from a heart attack, stroke, pulmonary embolism, deep vein thrombosis, or any other cardiac event, you might be entitled to financial compensation. You have rights, and you need to let us fight for your rights. And you pay no fees unless we win. So call the Tort Attorneys right now. 800-708-7917. 800-708-7917. 800-708-7917. 800-708-7917. Cases may be referred to participating law firms in your jurisdiction. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This 
This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Drop by freetalklive.com. And you can enjoy all kinds of features that we share with you there completely free. Now, of course, buying gold and silver, you can't do that for free. You've got to pay uh, usually some sort of form of Federal Reserve note variant. Uh, but usually it's a good investment because over time, uh, gold and silver tends to hold its value compared to things like the Federal Reserve note. And Mark, where could one go if one wanted to purchase gold and silver? You can go to gold.freetalklive.com. And it's it's GCN, uh, whose uh, sister company is Midas Resources. That's who we're working with. And one thing that's really important is trust when it comes to buying gold and silver online. You never know with whom you're dealing if you're dealing with one of these you know, places where you can get it a, a little cheaper or whatever it might be. Midas Resources has been doing this for well over a decade, and I've done business with them for years. You can trust them. Just, do your, just go to gold.freetalklive.com. Silver's at a great price right now, and um, I'd pick some up. I am picking some up, as a matter of fact. It is gold.freetalklive.com. All right, so Vice.com has uh, reported on Proposition 47, which is not, um, well, I guess it is the first time that they've almost completely defelonized drug possession, at least if you've been convic uh, convicted of having drugs for your personal uh, use. I don't think they have defelonized the sales of those drugs. So possessing, you know, uh, multiple drugs in multiple baggies usually gets you a sale charge. And so I don't believe they have defelonized that. But if you, for instance, had uh, some LSD or something like that, in a lot of cases, uh, those are an instant felony. So, you know, you got to be careful with that. And now in California, they have almost completely defelonized. Based on a ballot provision, number 47, Vice.com has uh, had a, a, the story here, but it's also sort of a national trend uh, to this sort of push for the already, already 30 states have restructured their laws since just 2007. Now, I, I remember in New Hampshire, there was a discussion going last year to reduce penalties or at least make it even for crack cocaine versus uh, cocaine. And I don't know if that went through. I don't know if uh, if D Daryl, who's in the back of the room, knows he sort of knows these things about you know which bills have passed and which haven't. But that was also something that uh, was being proposed. And I don't recall, and I, I was sitting there for that discussion, and I don't recall there being any real opposition from the police on that one, which, you know, that's a good thing if the cops are just kind of standing back and saying, yeah, okay, you can defelonize that. That's not a big deal. Part and of that's... me wonders if the reason for that is because they're just too full of the pr the prisons are that just was too a, full. Yeah, yeah. that was they, the motivator here in California. But yeah, that's not a philosophical understanding or anything. Like, yeah, it's no, getting certainly. a little bit better, but it's only because they couldn't physically build contain the anymore. Fast enough. <laughs> yeah. So, oh well. I it's, mean, it's true. I'll celebrate what I can. You know, we'll take our victories where we can. But I don't know if this is like a philosophical victory or just a. Ah, we can't build prisons fast enough, so let's yeah. let some people out. It's well, the latter. It looks close enough to a philosophical victory that that's right. Like so, you know, when the state is forced into a situation where people, uh, you know, then get the option of saying, you know, this mandatory minimum thing, it's not working out. Uh, this whole incarcerating people who haven't harmed anybody for years and years under felonies that's not really working out yeah um that it still looks for all the world like a philosophical victory it certainly looks like the state failed right like for anybody who's looking objectively at this situation it'll be pretty clear that well that didn't work uh so at least they're trying something different uh, instead of continuing on which you know with the same failed policy no i can celebrate this but what i really want to know is when are the prison doors swinging open? When are the people who are currently in jail for these crimes, these victimless crimes, when do they get free? That's an excellent question, and the story here at Vice doesn't make that clear. Um, they have defelonized it. I presume that's going to mean people are going to be released, considering that was sort of the intention behind the bill. Um, but no, it's not really made clear as to when that will actually occur. Knowing the state, it'll be later rather than sooner. Right. Well, um, reading from the text of the bill, it uh, requires a, quote, thorough review of criminal history and risk assessment for any individuals uh, before resentencing to ensure that they do not pose a health risk to the public. 
So, so they'll probably, yeah. I, I don't know if it'll require each prisoner to motion for resentencing after this or if they'll yes. automatically. Yes, because it uh, says about 10,000 inmates will be eligible for resentencing. Right. So if they don't get the, if they don't get the news, and I'm sure they will hear about it, but if they don't get the news or they just, they like to stay in prison, uh, they don't have to motion for resentencing. Yeah. You know, prison actually is a safe place for hard criminals, like for real bad people. Uh, they would face far worse punishment in the real world on the outside, uh, than they would on the inside where they get protected. Well, of course, real bad people are not going to be the ones uh, affected by this because oh, that's a good point. this will only be affecting uh, drug so-called criminals. Going on here with the piece over at Vice.com. Uh, so again, more than half of the country with the highest incarceration rate in the world is finally recognizing the need to rethink what it means to be criminal. Governments are starting to ask who's in prison and should they be there, as says Allison Lawrence, policy specialist at the National Conference of State Legislature's Criminal Justice Program. She's been closely following prison reform across the country and is documenting its development in comprehensive reports over at the NCSL's website. She says that it, if they find uh, that some people shouldn't be, they change their criminal code and lower the penalties for low-level offenses. If they're not lowering the penalties, they're authorizing community sentences and giving judges more discretion. The process is a derivative of what's known as justice reinvestment. Initiatives hmm. like Proposition 47 take prison and corrections data and use it as the bedrock of incremental reforms that aim to cut incarceration costs while boosting public safety. Texas, somewhat surprisingly, given its reputation as a national backwater, was one of the first to pursue it. The state invested $240 million in expanding its rehabilitation services for convicts and increasing parole and probation capacities for local law enforcement in 2007. As a result... They say that Texas saved $432 million from 2008 to 2009 and that its 2012 prison populations were the lowest that they had seen in five years. Cool. Um, mm-hmm. here, good news. Yeah, and I know that here in Keene, uh, they built a brand new jail at a $40 million price tag, and it's already almost full most of the time. So they're, I think they're, they've been implementing alternatives here as well. Uh, they've got... You know, alternative sentencing, like, uh, you know, ho- house arrest where you might wear a, like an anklet or something like that, a GPS tracker kind of anklet. They, of course, have uh, working programs where, you know, if you've got a job, you can stay on the outside. Right. One thing that's interesting is, um, you know, the, the penchant that Americans have for uh, prisons. The, the penchant? Penchant? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, that they have for prisons is, is that, I mean, when you talk about house arrest— this would be really good for a lot of people. Who? Why wouldn't you want to put somebody on house arrest? Because at that point, they're paying for their own incarceration. Um, they because it's like twenty bucks a day or something like that. It, right, they're paying for their incarceration as opposed to the forty dollars, forty thousand dollars a year it costs to incarcerate somebody. The taxpayers pay. In many cases, the taxpayers just want to see that person behind bars. Right. It's a punishment mentality. It's a tough on crime mentality. Why wouldn't you start people out at house arrest, even, you know, even violent criminals who may have learned something just from the arrest? Isn't what we want is for people to simply not harm each other? The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. If you think this is the wrong direction, that is lower sentences, we'd love to hear from you if you're one of those tough-on-crime folks. 855-450-FREE. With autumn in the air, it's time to think about getting ready for winter. And it's time to save at HerbalHealer.com. You'll find amazing seasonal savings to prepare you for the fight against cold and flu season. Like Oregacillin to promote lung health. 30 capsules, regularly $34.95, now only $25.00. HHA Olive Leaf, the natural antiviral, normally $16.95 now. 60 capsules are just $12. HHA Elderberry Power, a great flu and virus fighter, regularly $16.95. 60 capsules, now $10. Save on all our homeopathic detoxes. Choose from lungs, kidney, liver, brain, libido, or whole body, normally $26.95, now just $20. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click on the Fall Winter Specials button to save on all our natural cold and flu fighting products. Also explore our Herbal Healer Academy correspondence courses that teach you how to handle your health naturally. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. 
Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Boost Kit Essentials Nutritionally Complete Drink, providing your picky eater with essential nutrition and great taste in one drink. Visit us at kitessentials.com. To make sure your kids eat healthy, follow the five-a-day plan. Serve three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruit daily. Remember, a serving could just mean a piece of fruit or a half cup of veggies. If your kids are picky eaters, ask a nutritionist about other sources. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on to join the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Where are those tough-on-crime folks? They're the ones who are responsible for these bad mandatory minimum sentences that have been imposed on thousands of individuals across the country. They're the ones responsible for what is now being undone, uh, or at least appears to be being undone in many states. California now the first to defelonize almost all possession of drugs uh, in a vote that happened on Tuesday. Proposition 47 passed, and uh, we're not sure, as Derek J. asked, when are these guys going to be released from jail who otherwise, you know, if they got hit with a felony charge for having, you know, some LSD and now that can be reduced to a misdemeanor sentence, they may very well be able to motion for uh, for for a resentencing and possibly be released with time served uh, at that point. So how soon that can happen, uh, I don't know, but I'm sure it's not soon enough for those guys. I think this is important to point out is, is that globally violent crime has been diminishing over the last couple of decades. Now, in the United States, we've had harsh sentencing laws over the last couple of decades. While I was in prison, there was a, you could expect to do somewhere between 10 and 20% in some cases of your sentence. And that was the reason that I took the plea bargain that I took uh, early on was because I'm like, <laughs> it could, I could be done with my sentence by the time we're finished plea bargaining here, um, if, I, by the t- if I took this to trial. So um, I took it. And 
but what we've, you know, at some point Florida enacted the 85% law. So now you had to do 85% of your mm. time. But around the world, they haven't been doing that. So why is violent crime diminishing around the world, but the United States uh, has more harsh, um, you know, sentencing laws? So maybe mm. there's not a correlation between those things. And I, I like to point this out. Because violent crime has been going down in the U.S. as well. That's correct. Yeah. Around the world and in the U.S., right. violent crime has been going down. You could say, if you didn't have the perspective that it's going down, going down around the world, that, well— Let's just see what the United States has been doing for the last uh, 20 years, which is increasing uh, sentences. And you might come to the conclusion that bigger sentences cause it's less, working. you know, that works, right? And I don't, you know, I'm not going to say it does or doesn't, but I don't know. And here's an interesting variable. To what do you attribute the reduction in I don't. I, I really do not know the answer. Um, you know, a global consciousness I, I, you know, Kumbaya, that sounds, just yeah, people that sounds like a bunch of ho- hooey, doesn't it? Yeah. I don't understand it either. I mean, maybe more interconnectedness. Governments people... monop- further monopolizing violence? If that could be. I really don't know why. monopolizing violence? I'm not why sure how governments violence? monopolizing violence would, uh, would have an effect on individual to individual violence. Fear. That doesn't make sense. Uh, you know, fear. I mean, the reason that uh, there is a reason that people don't commit crimes against each other in some cases because they fear being caught and sent to prison, right? Mm, sure, I guess. Well, then that's an argument that the tough on crime thing does work, but that I, no, doesn't it explain the it countries where it's not being, they're not as tough on crime. It's not an argument of, for that. It's only, like, we're not sure what the right sentence is to be most successful in dealing with a given inmate, right? Like, there's no way to know that. In some cases, somebody may do something terrible, and a year in prison may teach them Never to do it again. If prison is a good deterrent for crime, and there's some arguments against that, but one year may be right for the one person, 20 years may be right for the other person, uh, life may be right for another person, all for the same crime, if what your goal is, is to have somebody not commit crime any longer when they get out. If that, if you get that p- person who's a one-year inmate and you incarcerate them for 10 years, what you could get with those extra nine years is somebody who's embittered, Mm -hmm. somebody who's more dangerous, somebody who's been trained in how to be a uh, successful criminal being housed with a bunch of successful or, you know, a bunch of criminals for a very long time. I wouldn't call them successful. Not successful. Not successful. But, you know, he's learned some ways to get better. So you may very well create what you are trying to to not create. Mm -hmm. Can I uh, jump on the Debbie Downer bandwagon here for a second and, and point out that this California Proposition 47 thing not as good as I would like it to be. Yeah, first of all, it's, there's no philosophical change in politicians or voters saying, oh, these things are crimes or not crimes, and uh, we should let the peaceful people go immediately. Furthermore, this legislation reduces crimes from felony to misdemeanor. The, the following crimes, take a listen to okay. these. Shoplifting, mm-hmm. grand theft, uh, forgery. Fraud, writing a bad check, which is essentially fraud, and personal use of most illegal drugs. It sort of gets slipped in there with well, all these actual crimes. Well, like but fraud. wait a minute. I mean, should those things be felonies? Should you really be going to prison for seven years or three years for committing fraud? I mean, shouldn't the the, the appropriate response to those be restitution, where well, the the people who have committed those acts are making their victims whole, not so much sitting in a cage for seven years? Fair point. My complaint is just that these things are. Crime. Crimes mm-hmm. and they get grouped in with possession of drugs, which is not a crime. So there's a, a situation going on in here in Keene, and I'm sure there's one going on in every city around the country where, you know, somebody who's in, an employee who's entrusted with a certain level of uh, control over the books has embezzled b- 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 more than a hundred thousand dollars, a couple hundred, couple yeah, hundred allegedly, a hundred thousand dollars. And for me, like, do we want to make? The theft of a quarter million dollars. I mean, it, it can go up from there. It really doesn't matter. A million. Why does it matter the amount? I mean, if if she if she embezzles a quarter of a million or whatever from uh, a lady who's a local business owner, why should that be more serious than say a maid taking two thousand dollars out of the you know two thousand dollars worth of jewelry out of her employer's jewelry cabinet or something? Because like it's that. more money. Like we quantify <laughs> value with. But why dollars? is somebody who has more money more important than somebody who doesn't? If 
if you are hired by if you you know if you're the the nanny hired by a couple who can barely afford your services and you also steal some of their jewelry to supplement your income that could hurt those people even more than losing a quarter of a million dollars would affect somebody who's got you know 20 million dollars or well, something but like who, that. okay that's fine um then take it as a percentage of the assets of the person stolen if you want rich people to be stolen from that's fine by me i'm not saying i, I want anyone to be stolen from but i don't understand why rich people being stolen from would be a more serious matter than people who aren't as wealthy well i think that there's there's different types of theft okay so you steal a loaf of bread because you're hungry um which i'm dubious about uh, hunger in the united states for adults anyway but uh, fine if so if you steal a loaf of bread because you're hungry that's one thing it's another thing entirely to you know take your role as a bookkeeper and embezzle a million dollars um, do, would I agree that taking $100 from a person who has net assets of $300 is more serious than taking a million dollars from somebody who has net assets of a billion dollars? I'd say they're equally as serious. It's theft both ways, and the amount of money shouldn't be as much of a factor. Why? Because you're you're hurting somebody either way. What yes, is the, but what does in the one case matter? you're hurting somebody more than in you're hurting somebody less. Yeah, do you agree with the statement, the punishment should fit the crime? Uh, well, yeah. Well, then right. you the would punishment agree with should be more that punishment should... for more crime. No, right? but I, I think the punishment should be restitution, which would mean that the punishment would be the amount stolen plus whatever percentage the court decides is appropriate. Okay, fine. So um, I steal a million dollars from you. I spend it on uh, hookers and blow. <laughs> uh, I get caught, and the court says. I owe you a million dollars. Now, It'd I don't have a million. probably be a million do- pr- plus, you know, 10% or 15%. Fine. Or- you, you pick the number. What number is it? 20%. I have no idea. It should be seven what- times. 1. 2- That's what the Bible says. $1.2 million. I'm going to use your 20%. Fine. Okay. Um, so I owe you $1.2 million. The court said so. I don't have $1.2 million because remember, the hooker's in the blow. Mm-hmm. And um, I've got no money to pay you. How do I pay you? Well, there uh, would be the option where somebody could actually be in in some kind of a prison system or whatever, and then they could work it off from the inside if they if they wouldn't agree to so, actually working it off outside so of the prison system. Slave traders would buy my debt at a million one point two million dollars, and uh, I assume that they believe that somehow I'm. Going I don't to, know how it's going to work, Mark. I mean, I can't. I'm predict just what trying the, to imagine the world where I generate one point two million dollars doing anything but being on you, talk radio. I don't <laughs> I think mean, you would necessarily be able to generate that amount. So um, what do you want, a pound of flesh, the one closest to my, the closest pound of flesh to my heart? All I know is that people who are in jail cells aren't generating anything for the people that they've victimized. They're just sitting in a jail cell. How does that make the world better? Yeah, in some cases, it might be better for the millionaire to get some of his money back than That's nothing right. at all. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And there's also the possibility that the person's completely unrepentant and is not willing to make good, in which case they can, they can then sit in a cell. You know, if they're not willing to to do what it takes to make their victim whole, then I would say more punishment makes more sense in that case. But your thoughts are welcome here on Free Talk Live. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. The experts at Web.com want to build your business a successful website for free, just like we did for these current Web.com customers. We've used and and looked at other website designers, but there's nobody better than Web.com. Web.com can build your website in as little as seven days free. Plus, we'll promote it on all the major search engines like Google, Yahoo, and Bing. If after 30 days you're happy, we'll continue to provide promotion, hosting, support, and maintenance, all for one low monthly fee. If not, cancel and pay nothing. 
If you're in business today and you don't have a web presence, you won't be taken seriously. Call right now and you'll also get a free .com or .net domain name for your new website powered by VeriSign, the world's leading domain name provider. Call 800-297-0154. That's 800-297-0154. No upfront charge for site build, after which ongoing fees apply. Rights to site are relinquished when canceled. Domain included during active service, after which fees apply. That's 800-297-0154. A man thanks God he's not sexually attracted to children, and Popeye's home is boiglerized. Week in and week out, you come back like a housebroken Pomeranian, loyal to the bitter end. Good boy. This is the Onion Week in Review. Georgia's Cobb County Evangelical Hospital held its fifth annual Walk to Cure Gayness today, reportedly drawing thousands of participants to raise funds that would cure sufferers of their homosexuality and make gayness a thing of the past. Hospital administrators told reporters that funding from the walk would go into providing new state-of-the-art gayness treatment equipment, along with remodeling the hospital's physical therapy center, which has spent nearly 14 years reteaching gay men how to walk properly. Oh God, I was a goner. But as you can see, I'm now happily married to a woman, and as of next month, I will have been in full remission for two whole years. I'm just so very, very happy. Everything's really good in my life. This is the Onion News Network. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Sentencing reform uh, has been happening uh, all around the country, according to Vice.com. And California just became the first state to defelonize all drug possession cr so-called crimes for personal use, apparently. They've uh, dr dramatically changed that now, and it'll give uh, at least 10,000 inmates without a history of violent or sexual crime the potential to challenge their sentencing. Not only did they reduce the sentencing or reduce the possibility of sentencing, again, changing drug possession from felony to misdemeanor, not only did they do that, but they also uh, they also raised the amount of money that would qualify one for a felony theft uh, charge as far as, you know, what's the dollar value of the items stolen. And this is a real problem. Consider that these laws were written, you know, many years ago with a dollar amount, not a uh, progressive dollar amount, but just a dollar amount. Right, so, so inflation wasn't a factor in the, the law-making right. process. A friend of mine stole a backpack that was a, you know, not your average school backpack, but a backpack backing backpack okay <laughs> and it was three hundred dollars in florida that was a felony um that's the amount for felonies as, as i recall the story so i mean the guy went to prison over a backpack yeah it seems unreasonable yeah so according to the story here at so stealing a backpack by the way vice will actually give you some more information uh, but i want to let you know about pro xpn because they are a global virtual private network and they encrypt your online data. Why would you want to do that? Well, because your internet service provider is probably logging all of the websites you visit and all the search terms you enter. Maybe they're selling that information or maybe they're just holding on to it. Some of them, they may be holding it for up to five years. And that's not the only group that can you know snoop on what you're doing online. You could be sitting in a coffee shop and somebody could be there trying to sniff out your Wi-Fi packets to snag your credit card information or bank account uh, login 
info. So, you know, all that stuff is uh, is available for the people that know how to pull it down from your Wi-Fi signal. You can stop that from happening by encrypting the data coming in and out of your computer, and that's what ProXPN does for you. They've got an app. You download it for Windows, Macintosh, iOS, or Android devices, and you can go and get it for free at ProXPN.com slash FTL. Linux users, there's a way to get it working for you. It's just a different setup for uh, folks on Linux. And when you're ready to upgrade to get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can access, private torrenting, and getting past regionally blocked websites, that's all what you get with the premium account. You can upgrade for quite the discount. Use our code FTL50 and you'll save 50% off the price of their annual account that breaks the price down to about $5 per month. Plus, you get that savings locked in for the lifetime of the account. And you can save even more if you use code FTLBTC and pay with Bitcoin. That'll save you 62% off the price of the annual account. You get it all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. And ProXPN does not keep records of your online habits at all. So don't forget code FTL50 or FTLBTC. Go and get a great discount on privacy that is priceless at ProXPN.com slash FTL. So continuing here uh, with a little bit more about what has happened out in California as of this recent uh, vote on Tuesday, voting to pass what's called Proposition uh, 47. That's resulting in the defelonization of almost all drug possession charges, and it goes even further to actually address the issue of uh, some some other nonviolent crimes. I mean, theft isn't a isn't a crime with no victim, but in a lot of cases, there's not violence uh, involved in it. And uh, I'd rather be stolen from than. Beaten and beaten and robbed. Ro- yeah. Robbed, yeah. Uh, while distinguishing between dangerous and non-dangerous criminals is one facet of this national reform movement, another is making sure state policies towards non-violent crimes like theft are aligned with the inflating cost of goods. Some of these states' theft laws were ratified more than 20 or 30 years ago, and as a result, many of the monetary thresholds for felony charges are disconnected from today's commodity price indices. Most of the 30 states that have enacted justice reinvestment or similar initiatives are showing signs of success or at least progress. Based on data from the past few years, Vermont's prison population has declined by 5% since 2009, and the state is expected to save $54 million by 2018. South Carolina has seen a 2% drop in the number of parolees or probationers being sent back to prison for committing new crimes. Hawaii, which has some of the highest cost per prisoner rates in the country due to its pricey land, plans to save nearly $130 million over the next five years by changing its retainment laws for parolees and low-risk offenders who have completed their sentences. Others like Kansas and Oklahoma. You know had- what they should do? In, in the case of uh, places like Hawaii, the, I mean, they should consider contracting out their um, convicts to the mainland um, states like, I don't know, who's got cheap uh, land, Mississippi, Mm -hmm. um, in exchange for more good time. So, Mm. hey, if you... If you're willing to go sit off somewhere else, we'll let you out sooner? Yeah, right. I mean, you know, and how many inmates would be willing to do that? I think quite a few of them Most of them probably would. Uh, Unlike... Because I I can tell you, um, when I was in prison, one thing that I would have really liked to have done was boot camp. You know, this whole uh, thing where they, they, you know, put you through this boot camp style thing to let you get out sooner. They especially do this with youthful offender and juvenile offenders. Um, You didn't get to do it? What, no, you, what is what is it that happens in boot camp? They We're not talking you, about the military here. They yell at you a lot, have you carry logs, um, get you up early, and um, sounds great. Yeah, it's it's a blast, <laughs> I'm sure. But it would have beat beaten the hell out of uh, prison. And my my question is uh, here is is can you whatever value there is to incarceration, can you speed up that value by making the incarceration less pleasant, especially with the consent of the incarcerated? Yeah, why don't we just go right to waterboarding? That's pretty unpleasant. How long? How much time would you, uh, you know, be willing to trade for a good waterboarding? I don't know the answer oh, to that. That sounds really sick. Well, I, I, I'm just asking a question here. So if prison, if the discomfort of prison is a value, and there are a lot of people here listening to me that would say, we should make prison as bad as possible. They're getting cable TV. They're getting workout equipment. They're getting, you know, too good of food and whatever it is that they claim that inmates are getting. A lot of times this is completely out of ignorance. I've heard all kinds of things claimed that inmates mm. get. Um, but, you know, nonetheless, it depends on where you are and what the situation is. But if unpleasant if you want to, if taking bad people putting them in bad circumstances with a bunch of other bad people treating them badly over a period of time is a value 
then can you take bad people, put them in with bad people, um, and treat them worse, worse, <laughs> and and get a better result for a shorter period, worse for a shorter period of time, and get a better result? And I don't know the answer to that question. That. Here's an idea, opposite plan. How about having competing prisons that offer incentives like that are nice instead of torture and punishment? We have that. We call it Canada, and the crime rate is significantly <laughs> lower there. What do you All mean? Right. You're supposed I'm, to move to Canada and no, your Canada. Crimes? When when you look at uh, when you look at Canada, you can see that they have have far more pleasant prisons. Mm-hmm. They have a diverse population, of ethnically diverse population, and that their crime rate is lower. No, I'm talking about real private prisons, ones where you sign up and you say, I would like to apply for your prison because I need to be incarcerated somewhere. Where and prisons I would prefer offer, the, yeah. maybe like, you know, if you're going through a court, uh, you know, you've been found guilty, then prisons would come to the table and say, hey, Derek, you know, we'd like you to stay at our facility. Yeah, hey, we see you've got an IT background. We can use Use that. Yeah. yeah. Mm, I like that, too. I think that's a great idea. Now, now, that would require some pretty significant reform, and I imagine it would become very controversial, but it'd be nice to see something like that happen, uh, especially in a place like New Hampshire. Hey, they're already doing prison labor and or uh, slave labor in a lot of these uh, jails and prisons. I did oh, it myself. I did it. Yep. And worked in that kitchen eight yeah, we, hours a day. Yeah, we worked in a kitchen. We weren't compensated for that. The only uh, reward you we got to was eat. not being tortured. We, we got extra food if we wanted it. Fair point. Yeah. But uh, the punishment if we did not go to <laughs> yeah. the kitchen was to Solitary be thrown in Solitary confinement. Hole. Yeah. That's right. So, which, and some countries consider that to be torture. So we were right. literally threatened with torture if we didn't do free labor. Right. And cons- so I, I'm, I'm with you completely because a lot of the problems with uh, incarceration is people who have made poor choices. So the idea is, is let's give them, let's to put them in a place where they can't make any choices at all and maybe they'll get better at making choices. <laughs> That's stupid, right? Yeah. There's a lot of really poorly thought out emotional blah that comes out when uh, you know you talk to people about incarceration they have spent very little time at it but what they're reasonably certain is is um, at least here in the United States I don't know what it's like around the world but it, if we can just pe- teach treat these people worse they'll act better do you think it's just a bloodlust that's just yeah um, I do. of course yeah they, they can only empathize they can't empathize the average person I don't think can empathize with a prisoner because they don't have that experience yeah. they may not know anyone who's uh, intimately who spent time in prison so they don't have that perspective to be able to come from to empathize um, but they can empathize with how they might feel if their loved one was harmed or murdered or raped or something like that. Uh, they can empathize with how somebody else would feel if they got robbed or beaten, etc. And so the, a natural human response is uh, is to retaliate. In, I wonder if it's way. less of that and more of the Middle Ages style everyone go to the gallows and watch mm, the torture watch happen. Sort Who's of got a solution for me? Give me a call at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. I mean, we've talked about this stuff all the time. Who's got a better idea? 855-450-FREE. All right, 855-450-FREE. You take control here. It's Free Talk Live. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Do you drink coffee? Was the last cup of coffee you had really good? Free Talk Live has teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you the best of the best coffee. Shade grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is for every 10 people that get their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. Get a free pound to try it out. A free pound of the best of the best coffee. Help others one cup at a time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com
The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. From Canaan, the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, November 10th, 2014. Silver is trading at $15.64 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,168 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $369. Antiwar.com reports tensions are on the rise between Ukraine and the Eastern Rebels again, with the city of Donetsk, the de facto rebel capital, seeing the worst shelling it's had in over a month as Ukrainian military forces move into the area. Not that the Ukrainian military were the only ones fighting, the rebels were quick to start shelling the airport on the outskirts of town, which lies in ruins, but still in government hands. Over a month into the ceasefire, what fighting there's been has been in Donetsk, though whether this latest escalation means a resumption of the war or not yet remains to be seen. The Ukrainian military sent additional troops into the area after the Easterners held a vote they objected to. The White House blasted the rebel move against the airport as a blatant violation of the Minsk agreements, but was mum on the government shelling of Donetsk itself. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts & Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760 the Associated Press reports former President George W. Bush had said there's a 50-50 chance his brother Jeb will try to run for president. George W. Bush says that the former Florida governor is wrestling with the decision of running for the Republican nomination for president in 2016. He told Face the Nation, I think it's 50-50, he is very close. On the other hand, he's not here knocking on my door, you know, agonizing about the decision. He knows exactly the ramifications on family, for example. He's seen his dad and brother go through the presidency, I'd give it a toss-up. The former president was more conservative in his estimate than other family members. Jeb Bush's son, George P. Bush, said two weeks ago it was more likely than not that the former Florida governor would move forward. George W. Bush is promoting 41, a book about his father, President George H. W. Bush. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. Reuters reports more than a million Germans and people from around the world on Sunday celebrated the 25th anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall, the event that more than any other marked the end of the Cold War. A spectacular 15-kilometer string of 7,000 illuminated helium balloons traced the course of the barrier that once snaked through the city, slicing across streets, between families, and even through graveyards. They were set free one after another into the night sky, symbolizing the breaching of the wall by crowds of protesters in 1989. The Berlin Staatskapell Orchestra played Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, Ode to Joy, in front of the Brandenburg Gate. Berlin's mayor, Klaus Wovereit, said as the first balloons were sent aloft, we're the happiest people in the world and we're thrilled that you brought the Berlin Wall down 25 years ago. Nothing and no one can stand in the way of freedom. Germans, whose national pride was shattered by Nazism during the Second World War and the Holocaust, have proudly focused on the peaceful East German Revolution that felled the wall as a rare and bright shining moment in their modern history. Festivities to mark the anniversary drew more than one million 
million Berliners and tourists to the heart of the once divided city. Earlier, Peter Gabriel played a powerful rendition of Heroes, and several German artists performed on stage as well. Despite the fog and cold, many wandered along the former Death Strip where the wall stood and where the illuminated helium balloons formed the Litzgrans, or Border of Light, were perched 3.6 meters, approximately 11.8 feet high, on poles matching the height of the barrier built in 1961 by Communist East Germany. The crowd also cheered when former Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev, widely admired in Germany for his role in paving the way of the wall's collapse, stood and waved. He ominously warned in a speech in Berlin on Saturday that a new Cold War was looming over the Ukraine crisis. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. The manatee is a solitary creature, drifting along in the warm, peaceful shallows. They are not usually held in a small glass enclosure with three other male manatees hell-bent on the violent, forced sex that I, for real, saw with my own eyes while alone one night at SeaWorld, San Diego. A distant relative of the elephant, the manatee has a prehensile upper lip which it uses to gather food. It also has a large penis. Classified as endangered, human boaters often cause serious wounds to manatee's flippers, rendering it difficult for this one poor little rescue manatee to escape a large male manatee intent on unwanted anal intercourse. One needed not to look in that little manatee victim's cold, soul-sapped eyes to know this was not the first time this had happened, nor would it be the last. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and we are launching into the second hour. Of course, plenty of time for you with your calls and thoughts. We've been talking about sentencing reform uh, California Proposition 47 passed last week. It was one of the uh, various ballot, uh, ballot initiatives that they had on which to vote there. And I don't have actually the uh, percentage by which it passed, but obviously it was enough because it passed. And they are decriminalizing uh, possession of various different narcotics from felony to misdemeanor. Uh, nearly all possession crimes that are personal are now defelonized in California. That's going to affect thousands of people that are currently behind bars. And I say this is a good thing. Uh, they also reduced, or excuse me, they increased the amount of money that would trigger a felony theft charge as well, given that the theft laws were written 20 or 30 years ago in most places, and or at least updated within that time frame, and they have old numbers on them. Those numbers are much easier to reach now due to the inflating money supply. You know, things some things have gotten cheaper over time, but others have uh, have gotten more expensive uh, due to inflation. And so they're they're factoring that in now in in California as well, and that sort of led to a larger conversation about prisons and restitution, and you know how do you treat people who have harmed others versus people who may have uh, you know committed an act like theft, which doesn't involve violence, but it still you know creates a harm on others. What's the appropriate way to deal with uh, with folks like that? What are some alternatives that maybe haven't been considered yet at all? And Derek J, I liked your suggestion, uh, which is similar to one that uh, Dr. Mary Ruart makes in her book, Healing Our World. And that would be that, you know, more free market world, people who were being punished in some, whatever the justice system would look like, hopefully would have options from which to choose as far as which prison that they could go into. And those prisons would then compete based on various different things. You know, well, you can make more money working at our prison or we've got a nicer uh, gym or, you know, it's a nicer system in, in which to be. You know, there's no rapes that happen and, you know, things like that. Uh, having prisons actually compete for their prisoners would bring a new level of accountability and would bring a new level of uh, comfort. But of course, that won't be popular. Now, if you I'd like to point that. out that um, a prisoner who's moving from you know the crappy prison to the better prison, I think they should be able to do that. I think that prisons should be you know I don't know certified by the the state um, if it's a state sentence, they should be certified by the state for uh, their uh, for 
being a prison and that inmates should be able to move freely between them as long as they pay for their own transportation. So mm. if the good prison is in um, uh, Pensacola and the bad prison is in Key West, I don't think that the taxpayers of Florida or the United States should have to pay for the transportation in between. That should be the inmates thing. Now, I think that inmates should be able to work from inside of prisons mm -hmm. um, at gainful employment. Well, and that would be one of the ways the prison would be able to fund itself, in theory, without taxpayer funding as well, would be to you know, essentially take a portion of the prisoners' earnings to fund their room and board. But I think that we should explore far more thoroughly the, um, the uh, at-home incarceration thing, the uh, house arrest thing, because... This is something that's not getting used very much, and it would mm -hmm. be hugely effective. The reason that it's not being used is because there's a prison industrial complex that makes a great deal of money on people being incarcerated. I think it's horrible. I can't believe you see it as a solution. Wouldn't it be a nightmare world if everyone were walking around with these bracelets? I mean, the government already thinks we're all criminals anyway, so we're going to put GPS trackers on everybody now and make them pay for it? Look, I, I, I'm not happy with the way that the government um, you know, meets out punishment generally. I consider that what happened in California to be li largely a step in the right direction. But I would also say another step in the right direction is not throwing somebody in, in prison immediately. There are a lot of people in prison that would would abide by the rules of house arrest. And if they would b abide by the rules of house arrest, why are we spending $40,000 a year of taxpayer money to keep them there? Yeah, fair question. Well, again, it's that punishment mentality, which, of course, is going to be what you go up against. I mean, when the three of us who've all spent time in some sort of lockup facility, Derek J., you and I in jail, Mark spent time in prison. Um, you and I, Derek, were there for civil disobedience. Mark, not so much. Uh, but, you know, we've had that experience, and so it's easy for us to uh, to empathize with the people who are also having that experience. But when when you throw out this idea, and you know, I support it, this idea of, oh, well, let's have the prisons compete and, you know, better conditions and things like that. That goes up against what Mark was saying earlier, that a lot of people, they don't want good conditions for people in prison. They mm -hmm. don't want you to have, uh, you know, even in today's prisons, they don't th they think the, the conditions are too good now uh, in the in many prisons. You know, like you said, you can have a TV, there's cable, there's, you know, different things that Well, it uh, depends on access. where you are. In Florida, um, you know, they... At one point when I arrived, you could they would uh, play movies uh, on videotape. Um, now, they said we had cable TV. Well, that's true. The closed-circuit television was uh, run, on know, a cable. run on a cable, but this wasn't what we would have called cable mm, yeah. TV. You it's didn't not, have Cinemax. Or right, nothing like that. <laughs> Showtime. And then because inmates need to be treat, treated worse, there were there were no movies at one point. And then they took away the weights from the weight pile mm. and, and all the weight. You know, there were basically no weights to work out with. Don't and, want you getting too strong. Well, that was one of the fears is, is why are we making a place for these uh, criminals to go get more powerful and more dangerous? Mm. That was one of the arguments. And, uh, well, you know, the fact is, is that exercise is good for the mind. That's why. So, uh, but that's what you're going up against is this mentality that prisoners need to be punished. And I think that's going to be the biggest challenge well, to so any what? kind of reform. I'm not against punishment entirely. I just, I, like, let's be clear on what we're doing when we do it. I don't know. People don't have to pay for the new systems if they don't want it. I mean, I think it should be voluntary. Like, the way I imagine this voluntary system of punishment starting out is through some maybe wealthy philanthropist who says... You know, I want to put my money where my mouth is, make the world a better place, and stop this crazy uh, explosion in the growth of the prison industry. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to do is put up the money for the first thousand inmates at this new facility, and yep. it's going to be such a huge success. Other people are going to want to invest and do the same thing. Maybe there will even be competitors, or they'll grow and expand to other parts of the country. I mean, it would have to start somewhere, and I think it would have to start like that, v voluntarily. Not forcing somebody, taxpayers to, to fund this. Somebody would have to uh, approve a change in the system to allow that individual to take in prisoners in the first place. If, even if you had somebody with a, a buku bucks willing to put money into a new system, new prison system, or a new jail that they build that is more humane, or whatever their you know the benefits would be of it, 
they would then still have to pitch that to you know the Department of Corrections or the County Commission or the state. I don't know who it would be that would have to sure. approve that. And then they'd have to say, okay, well, yeah, we'll consider sending some prisoners your way. And that's when you're going to run up against this mentality. So people's mindset needs to change first on this. And that's going to be one of the toughest things to do because people don't want to acknowledge that there are human beings in those prison cells. The reason why the, the jail here in Keene is so offensive to people um, is because of its location. Here in Keene, they moved the jail from a small town to the west of Keene uh, that you know was like 20, 30 minutes to drive out to the jail from, from Keene. Keene's kind of the center of Cheshire County. This is where we live in New Hampshire. Um, and so this, the jail was out like 20, 20, 30 minutes out to the west of Keene. Now it's right in Keene. It takes five minutes to drive to the jail or 10 minutes max from anywhere in town. And uh, and so it's much more easily accessible and it's more visible now because it's on a main drag. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, it's on the same street where you guys have this new thrift store that uh, that activists have opened up in town that you're working on, Derek J. And I, I think I've heard there's 10,000 cars that drive by there every day. So now this thing that used to be cloistered off in the west end of the county where nobody really had to see it is now a daily thing that folks drive by and they see and they don't want to. They don't want to be faced with the thought about what goes on behind those walls. It's much more, it's more, uh, much easier for people to put those people out of their minds and not think about that at all. Because to think about jail for long enough would maybe re lead people to realize that there's people in there that shouldn't be there, that that don't belong there. And they don't want to think about that because they would much rather believe that the jail's just there. It's doing its job. It's imprisoning the bad people, and the bad people are the people that go to jail. And so we need to punish bad people, even though we all know that's not necessarily true. I get what you're saying. It would be very difficult. It would be an uphill battle to convince people that uh, perhaps jails should be voluntary and they should be radically different. You should allow people to go in and work for this new system. But you got to start somewhere. Oh, I, I can agree. imagine there would be children or ju juvenile delinquents before they get to the bad jails. Mm -hmm. They can maybe try this system out. There's There's got to be a foot in the door somewhere. Oh, I think it's worth I think it's worth pushing for. I just, yeah. uh, I don't think it's going to be an easy task. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And, of course, if you had some proof of concept that it works, then it would be a little bit easier. Free Talk Live. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800-691-6129. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm. This time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American. Covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. 
When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the Liberty Media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. In every age, a technology is created that upends the foundations of society. The wheel, the printing press, the internet. Now, in a world sliding into financial chaos, a new technology is changing the way monetary systems work around the world. It is called Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a new form of money controlled not by banks, governments, or corporations, but through mutual commerce between free individuals. To learn more, visit WeUseCoins.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You're invited here to take control of the airwaves at 855-450 free. We're talking about prison reform and, you know, what can make things better for all of society and is treating prisoners better going to help uh, you know improve people's lots in life in the future and so therefore make them less likely to reoffend uh, so different opinions on this you're certainly welcome to share yours toll free at 855 450 free now LegalZoom.com can help you with various different paperwork filings. Some such. of which can keep you out of prison. Mm. <laughs> Just go to LegalZoom.com, whether you need a patent, a will, a trademark, uh, you know, divorce proceedings, copyrights, name changes, prenups, pet protections, power of attorneys, deed transfers, leases, whatever you might need, they likely have the document there. If it's a common legal document, they likely have it. They're going to ask you questions. Now, they're not attorneys, but they were started by an attorney. Um, and they're going to fill out the paperwork for you. And then in a lot of cases, you just have to get it, sign it. Maybe you'll have to file it someplace. But they make it easy for you at LegalZoom.com. Use coupon code FTL. That's FTL as in Free Talk Live. And save 10 bucks off your order. There's If you don't have a will, you need one. LegalZoom.com, coupon code FTL. Let's go to Tom. He's listening in Minnesota to WNMT. Hello, Tom. Yeah, I wanted to bring up the issue that they do offer work in prisons, but some of the prisoners are exploited by only giving them a wage of, say, 10 cents. I'm, I don't know exactly how much, but cents per an hour. And they make a product that they turn around and they sell to the counties. It's, uh, you live in New Hampshire. You have no. You have a swingway mailbox port. They're made in Minnesota. That they swing up when the snowplow goes by, and they swing back down. I'm sure that they're over there, but they're made throughout all of North America, and all the workers that work to manufacture those get paid. 1997 was like 12 cents an hour. Mm. I don't know how much they get now, but they sell them to the counties for 75 bucks per support. Then it's wow. a private corporation that profits from it, not the counties, not the jails. Yeah, it's true. Um, they this is this is true, and I think that. Um, one of the difficulties here is is that inmates aren't paying for their incarceration, right? They're not paying for the roof over their head. They're not paying for the food they mm -hmm. eat. And so when they get – when they do if, – if they were to make, say, I don't know, what a person who makes uh, mailboxes is, is worth, but say 12 bucks an hour, this would be entirely different than a worker on the, the streets making 12 bucks an hour who has to deal with the, you know, the, wife, rent. the wife, the kids, the rent, the, uh, you know, the insurance, and all the other things that go into being a quote-unquote free person. Yeah, that's a good uh, point. So these are things that need to be right, factor, factored in. I'm not saying that they, the 12 cents is a good number, mind you. I'm just saying that one of the problems is, is that inmates probably should be paying for their you know, room and board 
especially, you know, I, I'm imagining a world where so the only people that need to be in prison are ones that are actually a danger to, yes. the, to other people. I wouldn't lock somebody up who wasn't a danger to other people. Tom? Yeah, but the point I was trying to make is that it's a private corporation that's making the money, not the taxpayer. Oh, you've made the point. And it's that's valid. What, that's what irritates me. Yep. Yeah, it's completely evil. Well, I mean, but well, wait a minute. What if we had the situation that you were talking about, Derek J., where in Florida, by would, the way, um, it's the state that makes the money, where prisons would, uh, you know, bid for prisoners essentially with better circumstances, where where they come to the table and say you could make a a dollar an hour. There's a uh, huge difference prison. between that and what's happening here, and that's choice that the prisoners have no choice. Okay, so it's not that it's a corporation that's running it that is uh, offensive to you. It's that there's no choice involved. Yeah, yeah well, thank you for pointing that out. A lot it's, of prisoners do have the choice to work for these twelve dollars and uh, this twelve cents an hour, or not work for this twelve cents an hour, because their other choices are to, you know, be it, it's it, your mind's better when it's working in many cases. So mm -hmm. prisoners will want jobs, especially if there's the other job option pays nothing at all. So in a lot of cases, for these private uh, for these jobs, the the caller's talking about, the people are lined up. Yeah, making a choice under duress is not really the same as choosing from a variety of different options and prisons and Just different saying. rewards. Tom, uh, anything else you want to share tonight? No, that's it. Thanks Thank for you. the call, dude. I appreciate it. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Colorado, according to Vice.com, approved a law that made reevaluating its theft-related felony thresholds a mandatory recurring thing. Every three years in Colorado, the state analyzes its laws in the context of the price of goods and makes adjustments if the two don't sync up. Because of this, idea. last year the state doubled its felony threshold, bumping it from $500 to $1,000 for felony theft charges, according to Denver criminal attorney Kevin Churchill. While this burst of state activity shows the lock-them-up mentality in the United States is starting to wear down, plenty still needs to be done to nullify the status quo. As Vice reported in September, federal prison populations are slowly shrinking, but even states with justice reinvestment initiatives like Texas have started seeing their numbers creep upward again. Regardless, Proposition 47 has struck a major blow at America's prison problem. An overhaul of California's incarceration culture will not only have major statistical significance in terms of nationwide crime data, but should resonate in the halls of power. And uh, I certainly hope that's the case. I hope we see more of this sort of decriminalization, especially of drug possession, um, over time in more places because it's crazy how many people get locked up in the United States who have not harmed anybody else. And I agree with you, Mark, that only people who, who provide an immediate danger to other human beings are the ones who should be I, behind bars. I'm going to amend that and people that might run away from their, from obligation. their obligations. Sure. Well, right. So that comes back to the conversation we were having about the lady who's alleged here in the Keene area of embezzling $200,000 uh, from people. Would she be likely to run? Maybe she would. Uh, that's that's a good question. But I think if, running is okay. Running should be an option because you your reputation is going to come with you. So you're Not gonna, necessarily. Not if you change your name. All right. So you can only do so much, right? But in reality, it's going to catch up with you. You can't just keep running scams all around the country or the the world. There's, you know, we live in an interconnected uh, information age, and you embezzle two hundred grand one place, you're going to be found out somewhere else. I hope so, uh, and I appreciate that optimism. Well, you can't just say, but "All if right, you completely well, change your identity." Then how is that going to? How are you going to get found out? It just doesn't make it right to use force to contain someone just because mm -hmm. you are afraid they might run from their obligations. They should have the freedom to run from their obligations, and their reputation will follow them. I don't know if I'm ready to go for that. Um, uh, so, as far as I'm concerned. Once an obligation is created, I don't mind if uh, a certain amount of force is used to uh, to enact it. So let me mm. let me go ahead and uh, you know put something in front of you. Okay. So I steal something from you. Okay. I put it in my house behind right. a window. Yes. And I lock my doors. Uh oh. Like I his think innocence. I see where this is going. What's this? Like innocence? stealing his innocence? <laughs> no, I was. Let's oh, say I steal. It's a fine vase. A a gold coin from you. Oh, um, okay. And I put it, and it's out visible at the window. You know, yeah. I took it. And I'm like, that's my coin. Right now, I, you know, you you have talked to me about getting the coin back. I say I'm not going to give it back to you. You see it right there. Are you allowed to break the window to get the coin? Hmm. 
Yeah, this yeah. is absolutely this, you are. This whole nonsense that these libertarians where we can't use force for anything thing, it's coming into the liberty movement. I'm sorry. It's just a bunch of hooey. What's your answer to that question? Well, philosophically, I would have to say no, right? That I can't break into the window because philosophically, it's... I can say yes. Your window between me and my gold <laughs> coin. Yeah, why yeah. is there? Why How is do there... I know it's not a chocolate coin and he's teasing me? Uh... You could certainly be wrong, <laughs> but I, I then I've committed true. a crime. That's true. Then you would be, uh, yeah, if you've got the wrong guy or you've got the wrong place, then you'd have then... an obligation to make a person whose window you broke whole. That's true. But if you did uh, retrieve what it was you were seeking, then uh, then you should be able to do that. More coming up here in moments, 855 453. It's Free Talk Live. Are you ready to surrender your right to buy body armor? No joke. Congress is now trying to outlaw civilian body armor. And if House Bill H.R. 5344 becomes law, you can kiss your right to protect yourself against rifle bullets goodbye. Don't put off your body armor purchase any longer. Go now to InfidelBodyArmor.com. Thousands of military veterans trust their lives to Infidel Body Armor. You should too. Spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L. Infidel Body Armor. Just won't quit. For all our loyal listeners, it's time for another giveaway. Over the next 30 days, our friends at SupernaturalSilver.com are giving away six 16-ounce Supernatural Silver liquid valued at nearly $100 per bottle or their skin and body gel priced at $49.98. All you have to do is enter and win at GCNlive.com. Hurry, contest ends December 5th. GCN can give you and your loved ones a fighting chance with the Supernatural Silver giveaway at GCNlive.com. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what the readers of FreedomsPhoenix.com get every day. FreedomsPhoenix.com constantly providing the information, the real news about government policies, and the real relationship we all have with the coercive government. The real condition of the economy, innovations in technology, breakthroughs in energy, health, and computer science. Learn the truth well before it's admitted to in the lamestream media. The corporate media, nothing more than distributors of government propaganda, but now there's an alternative. FreedomsPhoenix.com. Constant news updates on the issues that affect your life in the most important ways. With liberty and property under constant attack, FreedomsPhoenix.com provides the understanding behind the propaganda, and it encourages the participation of its readers. Go to FreedomsPhoenix.com. That's freedoms with an S, Phoenix.com. FreedomsPhoenix.com. The revolution between the ears has already happened. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. 
This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free and bring up anything that you want here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Go to freetalklive.com. ISIS crisis or more hype, antiwar.com has the answers. They have the facts and the readership. What antiwar.com doesn't have is a pot of gold. The war machine has the magic of the Federal Reserve's printing press and the mainstream media behind their efforts. And all antiwar.com has is you. Their staff is down to a skeleton crew. Times are tough at uh, antiwar.com, and they are getting minimal pay. They're committed to keeping the website up, however, with the best of the worst of all the bad news. But it can't be done for free, and they can't do it without you and your donation. Please go to antiwar.com, and you can donate uh, there or give them a call to uh, facilitate maybe a larger donation. Antiwar.com slash donate, because war is the health of the state. Last week, speaking of war, the war on drugs took shape uh, in the form of another attack on the dark net, on the black market websites. Not just Silk Road 2.0, uh, but as we reported later on in the week, it turned out they had taken out multiple websites of these dark net sites that are operated on the Tor anonymizing system or what is alleged to be an anonymous system. How it is that they're finding the locations of all of these servers uh, remains to be seen. Maybe Who's they? They meaning the FBI. Mm. Thank you. Uh, so they took out Silk Road 2.0, and we talked quite a bit about that. Uh, I've got an article about who is Blake Benthal, the former SpaceX engineer who is alleged to have been running Silk Road 2.0. <gasps> But they also made 17 arrests as well. And uh, so it wasn't just Silk Road 2.0. It was a couple of other websites, a few other sites uh, that I have not heard of. The FBI was bragging that they had seized over 400 .onion domains, but that could have meant a lot of different things. That didn't mean they shut down 400 sites. Mm -hmm. What that could have meant was that you know one site might have had 10 aliases or something like that, 10 other uh, un dot onion. So for those that don't know, Tor, this anonymizing system, when you look on, when you go online, you go to dot com and dot org or whatever. Those are typical uh, domain name. What do they call those? TLDs, I guess. Anyway, yes. uh, those are kind of typical. But dot onion, if you try to put one of those in your regular web browser, it's not going to work. So if you see a dot onion domain, that means it's a Tor site. You have to have the special Tor browser to access that site. So they took down a number of sites, uh, and they put up their splash screen that says that, ha-ha, we've taken your website. And, of course, they've got all their gang insignias and logos and things like that on there, from the federal government goons to the European government uh, goons that were involved in this multi-jurisdiction, multi-nation uh, sort of task force that uh, they claim will continue to be taking these sites offline into the future. They are not revealing how they are finding the location of these servers. And maybe it's that they found one server that happened to host more than one site. Or, you know, maybe they haven't found 17 different servers. Maybe they found one and there was multiple sites being hosted on. I don't know. Not sure all the details yet. But we know they no have, one knows at yeah, this point. We know they've taken them out, and we know that people are in handcuffs and in prison cells uh, at the very at this very moment. But uh, the market rolls on, Derek J, and you have a story for us tonight about alternatives to these centralized marketplaces, which have a centralized point of failure. So when Silk Road and Silk Road 2.0, the two most infamous sites that have been taken down so far in this process. When these guys are targeted, the way they've been targeted is the feds have somehow, we don't know how, found the location of their supposedly hidden server. And then they physically you know, copy all of the information from that server. It's all being stored on that central location. But the marketplace is a, uh, an interesting thing, and it comes up with solutions to problems. And so one or two of them have been proposed. And Derek J., you've got some ideas here. Yeah, that's right. And reading from an article from Cointelegraph.com, Amanda B. Johnson wrote an, a terrific article titled, Dear Online Drug Buyers, Your Problems Are Solved. And yeah, she's exaggerating. Okay. <laughs> yes, she is. But there's hope. For those of us, uh, myself included, who would uh, like there to be free markets that exist in this world, yeah. a place where people can exchange value for value in a consensual interaction. And uh, so she, she writes, you know, every website you access through a browser, even if it's Tor, has 
a fatal flaw, which you just hit on, Ian. The There's one stack of servers somewhere, and one person owns them. Yep. This the power a- goes out or the, you know, the hard drives crash, that's it. You know, you can't get on those servers. It's the problem of a single point of failure, and it's responsible for not just servers going down, but skydiving deaths. You know, there's just one point of failure. Mm. If that parachute doesn't open, that's it. Yep. So the solution, decentralization. If you want to buy drugs online, Amanda writes, there are really only two words you need to remember. Open bazaar and free market. These are the names of two similar pieces of software that un- that are unlike any website you've ever used in that they don't use servers. Anyone using Open Bazaar or Free Market to buy and sell acts as his own client and server, tapping into the network of potentially thousands of other individuals also acting as their own clients and servers. So this is a... Uh, model of how the Silk Road functioned with the Silk Road servers as the single integral point of obvious uh, target of attack. So, oh, yeah. you know, you can uh, just envision they've got a diagram on the website, but it's just a single dot and then lots of dots connected to that one. Well, well and obviously, as- that's if that one dot goes out, everyone is is ruined. And not only are they under threat from being taken out by the federal government, but they're also under threat of attack from hackers and, you know, people who would love to get at the Bitcoin that uh, Silk Road was holding onto. Obviously, the feds got it, but if you know the average hacker or the better-than-average hacker uh, was able to pull off uh, an attack on the site, they certainly would do it too. So constantly, the people who've been running the Silk Road have really, you know, they have to harden their defenses and they have to mm-hmm. make sure that, you know, there's no ports that are open and they've got to really make sure they know their stuff when it comes to internet security because they are a target. Yeah, they're extremely vulnerable, exactly. And now imagine in your mind's eye, if you will, uh, now several dots, perhaps 20 scattered around, and they're all connected to each other, not just one central node. But they're forming a network of sorts. They can uh, transmit messages across different dots. Well, this is how open bazaar and free market work in contrast to something like the Silk Road. This no- is like uh, Bitcoin itself yeah. or file sharing networks like Torrents or something else like that. You know, Napster was an original Exactly. Sort of example of this, where clients connect together without the need for a centralized server, and that makes it almost impossible to take out. That network can't, yes. can't be destroyed. Yes, you may be serving one Metallica song from your computer if you're, you know, sharing, doing file sharing, mm-hmm. but you being offline doesn't make that file disappear from the internet. There are That's still correct. plenty of other people who can share this. And so, similarly, no single user is integral to the functioning of the rest of the network. So one single node disappearing doesn't shut the whole thing down. It's going to really change things as far as doing business online. It's huge. It's I mean that we we did talk to one of the founders or programmers with Open Bazaar, and I know that uh, he he probably is interviewed in this article. I haven't read the one that that you're sharing, but his name is Sam. I think Sam Patterson, hmm. and uh, and he's like, wow, like what a visionary. Uh, I really love what they're doing over there because. If you can make it so that a market can function, if that people can buy and sell and still have a reputation system that's uh, that's workable, then that would be a major advancement. Right, because it would be – if you're in a marketplace where there's no reputation system, then you're just going to have people ripping each other off and nobody's going to use the market um, system. So right. if, if I'm anonymous and you're anonymous and I say, okay, send me the money and I will send you the items – then you'll send me the money and I won't send them back. I send you the items. Mm-hmm. But if I'm anonymous and there's a rating system attached to, say, my online name, you know, I'm uh, uh, Gilgamesh47, and uh, you, who are um, little peewee one, uh, you you send me <laughs> the, the money. <laughs> And um, I then, as Gilgamesh 47, I have a reputation. So I can either choose to keep the money and then have my reputation sunk, or I can give you the items that, that you said that you're going to have, and then my reputation goes up and I can do business with more people. Well, plus I wonder if Open Bazaar and this new one I've not heard of before tonight, Free Market, uh, are going to be implementing some sort of escrow system or other things to protect buyers and sellers. We're coming up here. We'll learn more in moments on Free Talk Live. You can share your thoughts, too. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust, who will never betray you, or cooperate with the NSA? 
stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Are you predictable? When was the last time you surprised someone with something totally unexpected? At ProFlowers, we think predictability is boring. So we're making it easy for you to be unpredictable by offering our best-selling 100 colorful blooms for just $19.99. Plus, we're giving away a free glass vase with every order. But hurry, because this incredible deal ends this Friday. Go to ProFlowers.com, click on the blue radio microphone in the upper right corner, and enter the secret code 0700. That's ProFlowers.com, secret code 0700. With autumn in the air, it's time to think about getting ready for winter. And it's time to save at HerbalHealer.com. You'll find amazing seasonal savings to prepare you for the fight against cold and flu season. Like Oregacillin to promote lung health. 30 capsules, regularly $34.95, now only $25. HHA Olive Leaf, the natural antiviral, normally $16.95, now 60 capsules are just $12. HHA Elderberry Power, a great flu and virus fighter, regularly $16.95, 60 capsules, now $10. Save on all our homeopathic detoxes. Choose from lungs, kidney, liver, brain, libido, or whole body, normally $26.95, now just $20. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click on the Fall Winter Specials button to save on all our natural cold and flu-fighting products. Also explore our Herbal Healer Academy Correspondence Courses that teach you how to handle your health naturally. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We're talking about the crackdown that happened last week. It's not been quite a week, but almost uh, the good bulk of a week here. Uh, since Silk Road 2.0 and some of its competitors were taken offline from the so-called dark net, which may have a leak in the dark. Maybe some light is leaking in <laughs> at this point. I'm not sure how they're finding these servers. It's kind of disturbing. Uh, but there are others that are still online. As of a couple days ago, I had ch uh, checked out Agora Marketplace, which interestingly was, according to a, a rundown in August of 2014, it was Agora Marketplace, which was the number one site. Uh, so Agora, which 
presuming who's doing this rundown and deciding how many sales are going on on these sites? Well, anybody can go on the site and look and see what the total number of listings is okay. on the site. So I forget who it was that put the chart together, but anybody who wanted to take the time to visit all 10 sites or however many of them there were, uh, there was quite a few of them on this this list. And it was actually not Silk Road 2.0. They were a close second, a very close second, but it's Agro Marketplace, which you know sounds to me like it's being run by a voluntarist. I mean, who else would name their... Uh, their online drug sales website or, or you know, free market site. Because, again, more things besides drugs are sold there, like, you know, uh, fake IDs and things like that. But who else would name their site after the Agora, which is Greek for marketplace and a very popular term amongst people in the liberty movement, but not so much outside of that. So that says that says to me the political leanings of the uh, the individual or individuals who might be behind that site but kudos to them for keeping their site online they have not yet been taken down i don't know if they're going to be taken down next week or if they've got a good enough security to where they won't. Because according to the federal allegations, uh, Blake Benthal, who we can talk more about, I've got an article kind of about who he is, they're claiming he made some pretty big mistakes in the operation yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, of, of his website. Number one mistake was using his Gmail address uh, to purchase the server space. So the server company knows who he is. They you know, had his real email address. So when the feds were able to track down the location of the server, it wasn't hard for them to determine who the alleged owner of said server was. And then another mistake that he made was apparently logging into, allegedly, you know, according to their complaint, uh, logging into his own hidden site without using Tor. So he, knowing the address of the site, the IP address of the real IP address of the site, uh, was able to log into it without going through the Tor system, which is the way everybody else logged into the site. So his user info was very different because it identified a certain browser and operating system combination, and they used that to uh, to also help identify him that as the alleged culprit. does not sound reasonable to it me. It sounds really sloppy. That's, I mean, it's worse than sloppy because it would be difficult to do, right? Because that's a n- series of long... It's a long number separated by periods, right? Mm-hmm. To to type in a website uh, that's it's not that's that an difficult. online. Well, you'd have to remember the long string of numbers, you which is unusual. Bookmarked. Okay, that's a good point. Yeah, you could yeah. have a bookmark, but it just seems like it would be like throwing your house keys just out into the, it's the lazy. in front of your house. If and, that's what happened, I mean, that's again according to the federal complaint. I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm taking right. that at its word, and obviously uh, maybe I shouldn't. Uh, but that's their story about how they caught this guy was that he was kind of sloppy. So maybe the guy running Agra or girl running Agra Marketplace uh, is being a little bit more cautious. Certainly hope they don't get caught. But there's some competitors that are going to be on the scene soon. And you say that uh, one of them's open now. Free Market yeah. is apparently operational now. Open Bazaar is another one. These are systems that are going to, as I understood our conversation with uh, one of the guys creating Open Bazaar, was that. This is going to be a decentralized system like file sharing networks where there's no centralized server at all for the feds to target. And individuals who are selling and buying, they can have an anonymity on these systems or not. Like, you know, if you wanted to create a better reputation for yourself, you could probably just put your name and address out there on on this system. You, You essentially create your own storefront, as I understand it, in these decentralized systems. And they don't have to be illegal stuff. Certainly no. it's a bunch of illegal stuff on these sites. But Well, no, wait. I don't can... know if you can say certainly it's that, Mark, because you haven't been on them, have you? Which one are we talking about? Uh, the Open Bazaar and Not Free Open Market. Not Open Bazaar. No, I'm sorry. I thought we were talking about the Agro Marketplace. Excuse me. Okay. Yeah, I know that Open Bazaar is being advertised as a free market. They're not promoting this as the solution to the Silk Road. The article you're reading, Derek J., suggests that these are the solution to the Silk Road. I think they are, but... because, you know, with, when you've got a central point of failure like Agora Marketplace and Silk Road and these other places do, it's only a matter of time before they're destroyed or taken out by, you know, they've got the governments of several countries working on this. It's really just a matter of time. They're they're putting their efforts towards cracking down on these oh, yeah. freedom websites because you can't have people trading voluntarily. Well, they want to send a, a message. To the status quo. Right. Yeah, they do want to send a message. But this is the answer, in my opinion, because to shut down a distributed network, returning to the article from Cointelegraph, the kind that Open Bazaar and Free Market run on, you'd have to knock out every single node yeah, on the possible. network. So while governments have displayed no hesitancy in the past to murder millions of people at a time, <laughs> these new technologies are not controllable. By a single government or even a coalition of governments. They stand to become robust 
uncensorable global marketplaces that would require a worldwide shutdown of the internet to stop. Mm. Yeah, that's not going to happen. I don't think so. And the solution to that threat, mesh networking, is already in development. Mm. So it doesn't look very likely that the government would be able to break down any of these marketplaces. So, but there's a learning curve because it's a new technology, just like anything, there's going to be some time before it's going to take some people to figure them out. Yeah, before you go on, one of the things to learn immediately about this is I saw a tweet and uh, from Sam Patterson, I think, over at Open Bazaar mm -hmm. or whoever it was that was tweeting. Uh, and, and this is essentially what he told us when we interviewed him at the conference. There was a Bitcoin conference we attended down at Disney World recently is where we met him. Yeah. And uh, this is not at least Open Bazaar. Free markets claiming they're online and everything's rolling. Uh, but with the Open Bazaar, their software is not ready for an anonymous use at this time. So okay. even though it's a beta, it's in beta or very early beta, you can download the software. Remember, he told us that you actually have to know how to compile the software and like you can get the source code and you have to compile it. So it's more of like a techie geek thing right uh -huh. now to even try the software for Open Bazaar. Hmm. I don't know about free market yet, or at least that's what it was when we were at this conference and that was about a month ago so you know if it's progressed since then i don't know he seemed to think early 2015 may be a more of a, a realistic time frame for like a, a public beta which you can just download a, a program and, and install it they don't have that yet and even if you were to go through the process of getting their early beta software it would not be something you'd want to do anything with any kind of you know drug purchasing selling because there's no hardening of of the technology for anonymity yet well these things the NXT free market and the Open Bazaar are not yet single click operations where you could just open up some program mm -hmm. and, oh, here's how I figure it out and it works. You're probably going to have to be the techiest person in town or talk to your, your techiest friends so you can figure it out. But uh, it's saying here at Cointelegraph that remember the first time you installed Tor or the first time you opened a Bitcoin wallet? <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. think about uh, how much learning it took to get to use that comfortably and safely. Comfortably, yeah. I mean, I'm, but Tor and the Bitcoin wallet, I mean, I used them and they sort of worked the way they were supposed to work. So it was exciting. Like my heart beat a, bit, beat a little faster and I was, yeah. uh, you know, it was something new and different, but it wasn't that difficult. Well, it's going to take some time to download the software and practice using it. And uh, it might even be. Uh, time to she the Amanda the author writes it might be time to prepare for the frustration that might come indeed and I, I would agree with that you know whenever I'm undertaking some tech venture uh, there's bound to be some frustration where something doesn't work the way it's supposed to or if to Google some error message that's probably going to happen but um, so gather your techie friends and if you're the techiest one in town offer your less inclined friends a hand in the move toward new and better solutions. She concludes, take heart that innovation is clearly on the side of those who wish to live in peace and prosperity. Mm. Yeah, I, I'm excited by, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm excited by open market. Uh, NXT, you know, that's one of these alternatives to Bitcoin, and I know some people are really jazzed up about it, but... Uh, Brian the, Sovereign likes it. Some people are really jazzed up about a lot of these altcoins out there, and there are hundreds of them. Yeah, yeah but this um, is not just more... any altcoin. NXT is significantly different from the others, and it's already operating. You, you can download the NXT client mm -hmm. and use the free market right from that client today. Uh, really? Because I'm on the free market website, which is nxtfreemarket.com, and it says you have to download the NXT client, and That's then right. you have to download free market to run on top of that. So there's two programs yeah, there's, that you um, would have to run. Yes, but and you run it from the client. So the free it's... market guys are charging fees, and it was my understanding that there would be no fees with the Open Bazaar. Maybe I'm wrong about that, hmm. but I, that was my understanding, that Open Bazaar was just going to make this software and it's... put it out there. But it's decentralized, so like uh, fees that that wouldn't make any sense. Like uh, they've like, got fees. Yeah, I know, but the, like Bitcoin has fees for sending yeah. money, and it's nominal, and it doesn't go to some central authority or something. You know, it just it, it keeps the network operating. Yeah, I don't know to whom these fees are going to, but on their site they say there are no fees for the rest of 2014. So they're trying to get people on board right now with this. Uh, we'll come back with more here in moments. 855, yeah. 450 free, but each item has a posting fee, and there's more coming up on Free Talk Live. 
DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. If Americans continue their reckless disregard of the U.S. Constitution, our freedoms and way of life may not continue. Original Intent, Spoiler, and Molan La Bay is a three-movie special that explains what we can do. From the director of Fiat Empire, this trio of movies features Ron Paul, Pat Buchanan, Edwin Vieira, and many others. On sale now at moviepubs.net. This is a mini library you don't want to be without. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Monday, November 10th, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,154, silver $15.58, and Bitcoin is trading around $358.58. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Support for Liberty Beat comes from eFoods Direct, redefining the way you think about storable food. Now, we've created a menu of food that is so good, so easy to make, that you'll find yourself eating it every day even though it has a shelf life of up to 25 years. eFoods Direct is offering 10% off to all Liberty Beat listeners. Go to eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat or call 800-620-5520 and mention Liberty Beat for your savings today. In the news, Germany and Brazil are the driving force behind a new version of an anti-data collection resolution the United Nations passed last year. Reuters reports the new version of the resolution calls mass surveillance and collection of metadata a violation of the rights to privacy and a hindrance to free expression. According to documents released by Edward Snowden, Brazil and Germany were both the victim of invasive surveillance from foreign governments, including the United States. The Associated Press has reported on newly released emails in which Attorney General Eric Holder states that federal prosecutors who criticized him and the handling of Operation Fast and Furious could, quote, kiss my ass. The Department of Justice released emails to the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee last week. The emails provide a glimpse into how Holder and other officials dealt with the unfolding of the Fast and Furious investigation and critical reporting from the press. On Friday, an unidentified man came to South Austin, Texas gun store Central Texas Gun Works in search of ammunition and a handgun. What employees and owner Michael Cargill soon discovered was that the man had a very specific purpose for the purchase. After filling out required paperwork for a background check, the man purportedly told Cargill he planned to use the weapon and ammunition to kill people at a hospital minutes away. Central Texas Gun Works took action and called police who later detained the man and questioned him. While there has been no further information about the identity of the mysterious man or what conclusions may come from the investigation, Cargill told Fox News the stranger identified himself as an agent of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Liberty Beat is made possible by Marjorie Wildcraft's Grow Your Own Groceries, homegrown food on every table. That's growyourowngroceries.org. And support also comes from the Cory Moore Show, liberty-minded, comedy-focused, 
and live every Friday night at 10 o'clock Eastern. The Corey Moore Show at CoreyMooreShow.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, November 10th, 2014. Check out the website at TheLibertyBeat.com and like us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash TheLibertyBeat. Following the firing of Nuclear Squadron Commander Colonel Carl Jones last week, and the firing of General Michael Carey, Chief of All Nuclear Operations, last year, management of the United States nuclear weapon system has come under severe scrutiny. In a scathing opinion piece published by the Associated Press, writer Robert Burns asserts America is in severe decline as a nuclear power. The government's lack of support for properly maintaining and updating its nuclear arms operations evidences its demise. Some who have analyzed the current nuclear system believe that the United States government may no longer be able to keep up the network of technology and personnel required for safely handling its massive nuclear arsenal. Since the arms race began in the 1940s, nine nations have detonated over 2,053 nuclear explosions on the planet Earth. The so-called 20th hijacker of the 9-11 attacks, Zacharias Moussaoui, has notified a U.S. district judge that he wanted to testify about the involvement of the Saudi royal family in financing the attacks. Moussaoui claimed he had information on financial support from the Saudi bin Laden Group, the Arab Bank, Saudi American Bank, the National Commercial Bank of Saudi Arabia, and other individuals. The request to give testimony came during a lawsuit filed by family members of the victims. The Liberty Bee is sponsored by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That number again, 800-686-2237. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, November 10th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. A severe allergic reaction causes Florida to swell up to twice its normal size. And a Ford assembly line worker is thinking about asking out a cute welding robot from work. It's time for the weekly feature with over 14 subliminal and completely unapologetic cues to purchase Energizer batteries. This is the Onion Week in Review. Area man Brett Lucier told reporters Tuesday he was left winded after placing a particularly lengthy lunch order at a local Wendy's. A weary Lucier said he struggled to get through the seven item order and even suffered a cramp while asking for the spicy chicken sandwich. I thought I was just about done after I ordered that junior bacon cheeseburger, but I was able to get that frosty in there too. And in this week's op-ed pages, a local man talks about how he was always just one of those kids who was off by himself taking cats apart to see how they work. In your hands right now are the 24 AA Energizer lithium batteries you were subconsciously manipulated into purchasing. We make no apology. For more, visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything right here, toll free, 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. You can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com. We're talking about the future of free markets on the internet. We've had uh, different examples of centralized freer markets going down, uh, meaning being taken out by hackers, uh, being attacked by hackers, or in some cases being taken offline completely by the FBI, as has happened with Silk Road 1.0, Silk Road 2.0, and now a few other sites uh, that were taken down in last week's worldwide global crackdown on the so-called uh, deep web that has led to a discussion about alternatives. What is the market going to provide? Because the Silk Road was an amazing advancement for the black marketplace. I mean, that uh, taking the black market, which is historically a very shifty place with uh, unreliable people, you know, running the products and services in the black market, and, you know, you never really know what you're going to get, and the prices are really, really high, and competition is, is um, violent in some cases with the black marketplace. Silk Road eliminated a lot of those problems. Silk Road eliminated the violence associated with the criminal drug trade. They made it a safer thing for people to be able to buy and sell drugs and other things like uh, fake IDs and things like that. 
So they really increase the safety of the marketplace. In fact, there's uh, another story, which we probably won't have time for tonight, but uh, in the Washington Post of all places, how the FBI has made the world a more dangerous place by shutting down Silk Road 2.0 and other online drug markets. And it's absolutely true that they have. Sounds like they get it. Yeah, well, that's good that you know, big company like the Washington Post is understanding of this, um, that these online black markets... Get it a little bit, at least. Yeah, these online black markets have literally saved lives, not just saved lives from people who might have been shot in a drug deal gone bad, but also saved lives in the form of the people who are taking the drugs, not taking an, an, an overdose amount, you know, not getting an unknown quantity or some sort of unknown drug and, you know, ODing on that without realizing it, which happens in the, the black marketplace due to unscrupulous, clueless dealers in certain cases. Um, on the Silk Road, you're more likely to get the drug that you have ordered than you are buying from some shady character on a street corner or in a club, or something like that. And so that results in safety, fewer hospital visits and things like that. Yeah, it's not only safer, it's also, it's just myopic of the FBI or the authorities to crack down on these websites that are offering you know, more goods or services, more information. It's the information age. You're not mm -hmm. going to force this information back underground now that it's out. There's plenty of information about what's available and, and what uh, these drugs contain or, you know, what right. sort of services you'll be offered. You know, once that Pandora's box is opened, there's no shutting it. I mean, there's no way that they can go back to the world that we had in the 1990s or the 1980s. Oh, they're trying their no best. Internet. They're going to use as much violence as they can to try to make things uh, like they used to be. But you're right. The cat's out of the bag. The uh, the technological advancements have already occurred and are continuing. And that's what the story was that you brought to the table here tonight, Derek J. Uh, what was the site, by the way, that was uh, publishing this? Coin. Telegraph. So that's one of those newsy Bitcoin newsy sites, right? Coin yeah, Telegraph. they do a pretty good job of covering the Bitcoin news around the world, things that are important. And I think this is one of the most important stories, as it affects not just the Bitcoin world, but the whole world. Uh, the, the whole world deals in drug trade, whether we like to uh, be open about it or not. <laughs> but that's the truth. Some allege even the federal government themselves are involved in uh, in the drug trade. That's true. Some allege that, but uh, you know, well, this is I mean, a big all you deal. have to do is go take a look, search uh, "soldier guarding poppy fields," and I think you'll probably find some relationship between the US United States government and drug production. You know, I forget who said it first, but uh, on the topic of currency, it wouldn't be a very good currency that that is Bitcoin. Uh, if you weren't able to buy illicit drugs with it, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, and to me, Bit, to me, the Silk Road was the, really the first killer app for Bitcoin. That was what really helped me realize how important Bitcoin was. Silk when Road I, was, yeah. When I first heard about when, when I first heard about Bitcoin, I was like, hey, you know, what's this all about? Digital currency is like, oh, you can buy drugs with it. But yeah, when I found <laughs> out that, when I found out that uh, the Silk Road existed, I you know it clicked with me, and I mm -hmm. realized, oh my gosh, this is huge because yeah. you know to change the black market like the black market's a multi-billion-dollar industry. I mean, there's a lot of money out there in the drug trade, and to uh, to make it safer and better. All around, I mean, just everything the Silk Road did for the black market has made it a, a safer, better, more reliable place. And when I saw that, I thought, wow, this really is great. Unfortunately, I didn't have the vision to actually buy any Bitcoins at that time. Had I done so, I probably would have gotten them for like less than 20 cents each. Uh, but nonetheless, womp, I did. Womp, womp. Yeah, oh well, hindsight's always 20 20. But that was, at the, I, I did recognize that there was real value in what the Silk Road was doing. And it's true. And so Silk Road 2.0 has been taken out now. And what they're talking about moving to now are decentralized marketplaces. Yeah, because you can't take it out with the central point right. of attack. I mean, you know, all these Silk Road, underground markets, they all have centralized servers somewhere. And however the FBI or the government people are doing it, they're finding these things. And it, they, people running the Silk Road and the other websites, Agora Marketplace, I'm sure they're making it as difficult as possible for the authorities to find them. But they're doing it. So we need a solution that doesn't involve a central point of attack. And I'm glad to hear there are at least two of them under development right now. There's this NXT Free Market, mm -hmm. which their website is nxtfreemarket.com. And then there's also Open Bazaar. Their website is Open Bazaar. That's B A Z A A R dot org. Um, now, I have, I'm curious. I, the, the NXT guys apparently have released their client and so their pro, the program. So I am curious to see what that looks like. 
how easy it is to use, that kind of thing. Because they're charging fees on the NXT free market. And, you know, it's not that much. It's apparently, you know, seven NXT, NXT is an alternative to Bitcoin. There's seven NXT per listing. And then there's a, a one NXT charge for every every message that you send. So Yeah, yeah but that makes sense. And this might be a little technical, but there are other altcoins uh, similar to NXT, like, um, what's this one? Ether or something? Uh, Ethereum? Eth- Ethereum, right. It's not even right. out yet, though, right? Well, in concept, it would be another altcoin, and a person would have to send Ether across the network in order to make these programs work, these programs that live on the Ethereum network. Hmm. And so, yeah, you're sending payment, you're sending a fee, but it's not going to anyone. It's not like there's these NXT goons that sit in their um, you know, thrones and they collect all these well, who's fees. who's collecting the... F- Wait a minute. Cigars. It they chew on like, cigars. It sounds like they're self-executing like a nominal nominal amounts in fees so that they help execute the program. Not that the fees are you know, being collected by Bitcoin miners somewhere or NXT miners. According to the uh, NXT free market website, the fees are going towards, let's see, it's 7.77x NXT to post an item. It is one NXT per transaction. So the entire cycle of listing an item, being paid and communicating with your buyer can cost less than 20 US cents uh, per you know, the whole thing. Okay. Uh, no percentages of the final sale price, no high fees. And they do point out that the their product, Free Market, which is designed differently from the Open Bazaar, that their product uses the NXT blockchain. Now, the blockchain is the sort of the technology behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. That's what makes Bitcoin work, basically, without getting more detailed about that. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it, it makes sense. If you're going to be posting things to the blockchain, then fees need to be included. And yes, yes. the miners would be getting a portion of that, but that's okay because that's part of what makes the the system work and it's decentralized it's not like you know there's this group of 100 miners and it can't expand from that and they're collecting all these fees it but i don't be think anyone the open bazaar is using the blockchain for their listings uh, and so therefore there wouldn't be fees involved with with open bazaar interesting um and i don't know why it would be you know 7.77 to list but everything else is one nxt so maybe there is a fee going to the designers I'm not really sure. The designers of the NXT free market are not public. So if you go on their website, they have the team, and their team members are Blacky Black One, JL777, and Mr. Knuckle, all who are uh, sound reputable. All yeah. who are portrayed as a silhouetted face. So we don't know who's involved in creating the NXT. You should be able to go on market. Google and just search Knuckle and find Mr. out Knuckle. who Mr. Knuckle is. Mr. Yeah, Knuckle. that endears trust. Well, you just eliminate all the female Knuckles that you find. Mm. 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. Where is the open bazaar team? They are public. You know, you can meet these guys. They're sort of repping what they're doing. And Mark, your fear is that the guy behind Open Bazaar is going to end up in prison uh, as a it's result a fear of that. Of mine. More coming up. It's Free Talk Live. You can share your thoughts. Did you know by age 50, half of all men have an enlarged prostate? This means more urges to urinate, longer bathroom trips, waking at night to urinate, or issues with sex. If this sounds familiar, call us now because we're shipping free bottles of Super Beta Prostate to listeners of this station. Super Beta Prostate is a non-prescription formula guaranteed to reduce the symptoms of your enlarged prostate. It's yours free. Pay only shipping and handling. Just call 1-800-856-4195. In clinical trials, the ingredient in Super Beta Prostate was shown to reduce urges to urinate improve bladder emptying, reduce waking at night to urinate, and improve quality of life. This Super Beta Prostate Free offer is for listeners of this station, but it won't last. Don't wait. Just call 1-800-856-4195. That's 1-800-856-4195. Call 1-800-856-4195. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938, 877-357-9938. 
Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leading them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want. We're talking about the future of the marketplace, the online underground markets that now may not have to be as underground. Uh, the Open Bazaar, for instance, software is being developed as we speak. There's already one out there called NXT Free Market uh, that is offering decentralized marketplace access, meaning that no one's in charge of this particular marketplace. There's no one Dread Pirate Roberts to be <laughs> targeted uh, as the, the leader. They, you know, That's what the feds do. They know how to take out the leader. Uh, for instance, we've seen this happen with our activism up here in New Hampshire. For those of you that are new, the, new to the show, uh, Derek J., Mark, and myself, uh, we're all here. I'm Ian. We're all here in New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project. We moved here in search of more liberty. We want to be with other people who care about freedom and get active. Well, in the, the first thing the cops ask is, who's in charge here? It sure is the first thing. and Or they'll, if they've already determined who's in charge, they'll go and arrest that person. Um, and that's what happened at the 420 celebrations that, where we had a hundred some people in the park smoking cannabis. They zeroed right in on the two individuals they believed to be the so-called so ringleaders, you know, or the organizers or whoever they thought was in charge. So that's how their systems are set up. That's how government is structured. There's someone at the top and then below them, people underneath them with different ranks. And uh, so they figured that we must be set up the same way. The activist movement must be set up the same way. <laughs> and that's what the Silk Road was. There was one guy at the top. He had a couple of admins or a handful of admins who were beneath him and they were all getting paid and everybody else underneath that. So they took those people out. And, uh, and they also took out the server. There was too much centralization. It creates too high of a price. It creates uh, too hard, you know, hard, uh, not a hard target. It's something that, you know, can be targeted with enough effort. Something can be done, whether it's taking out the site due to, you know, denial of service attacks by hackers or somebody trying to find a back door or the feds in this case actually finding the physical location of the server. This, it's this high value target that is worth spending time on to take out. 
right. whoever it is that, that that's spending that time. But with but a if decentralized, it's decentralized, they can't do that. Correct. The only way, as Derek pointed out, to take out a decentralized marketplace entirely is to take out all of the nodes of that marketplace, all of the people who are running the client or whatever on their uh, their system. So, for instance, I run the Bitcoin client on the studio computer here. Now, the Bitcoin client, there's probably hundreds of thousands of people in the world, if not more than a million, uh, that are running this very same client. In order for the Bitcoin network to go down, all of those nodes would have to be stopped. And that's just not an impossible happen. task. Yeah, for example, there's the Pirate Bay, which is a popular website where people uh, download different file types, um, typically music or movies. And this has been in operation for over 10 years. Yes. The authorities are not happy about that because it's illegal, right, to share files with friends and neighbors and strangers overseas. But it continues to exist because it is decentralized. It has been decentralized. There are um, there are mirrors, as they are called, of the the, pir the Pirate Bay. So if the main Pirate Bay server is taken down... There are others out there who are essentially mirroring that content. It's not decentralized right. it's not in the exactly same way. Exactly the same. Right. Yeah, it would be. I guess the analogy would be torrents themselves. Right. That's the. That, that's it. So the government got Napster. They mm -hmm. didn't get file sharing. That's correct. They didn't get torrents through file sharing. The torrents will still be there even if the Pirate Bay goes down. So for those that don't know, we're talking about Pirate Bay, the most infamous of all of the pirate sites out there with music and movies and video games and software and things like that all listed there without permission you know from whoever the creators of those things were um the the pirate bay itself doesn't host those files they don't have windows 7 or windows 8 or you know whatever new video game or music that's come out that's not on their server all they have are these torrent files that you can download and then when you open the torrent up it connects you to the decentralized network of the torrent network mm -hmm. where those files then stream to your computer from you know people all over the globe who are holding on to that same file but the pirate bay itself can be taken out. It's just really hard because they've hardened themselves with backup servers and mirror servers and things like that over over the years. And the Pirate Bay URL has changed over time too. It you know used to be .org I think a long time ago. It's now .se or yeah. something like that. So it's been a bit of a jump around, run around to try to you know they're trying to keep themselves up in and still operating a somewhat centralized website. And they've had an amazing level of success at doing that. But the guy, one of the founders of the Pirate Bay, did go to prison. Yeah. Recently. Yeah, that yeah. just happened. Yeah. Well, he actually just recently got out or was going to get out, and now he's going back in for some sort of hacking charge, which doesn't have to do with the Pirate Bay. It was something unrelated, apparently. So, yeah, there's still a little bit of centralization involved there. I guess as long as there are people, there's always going to be a, a central point of attack because they can always take the the people away and put them in cages and that that can be pretty effective well right and that's why mark, mark was afraid for the guy who's one of the folks behind the sort of one of the more visible uh, programmers behind open bazaar which is mm -hmm. this new idea of decentralizing a marketplace so unlike ebay or the illicit versions like silk road where there's that central server open bazaar would be decentralizing the entire marketplace among all the client computers but mark your concern was he's going to be targeted by the feds and taken out Obviously, he's hoping just that's in, not the case. Just in retribution for creating a uh, a program. Right, because he's yeah. not going to be responsible for the articles listed. One of the things they have to point out when they take down these Ill illegal markets, like these underground markets like the Silk Road, is they have to make a case that the person running the site knew what was being sold on the site and had some sort of an active hand in you know, procuring those things. Guilty. So, so one of the things they've done in this new case against Silk Road 2.0's alleged operator, Blake Benthal, is they have messages between him and an undercover agent who had been involved in the website from the beginning, one of the oh major boy. problems. Uh, but anyway, they had an undercover agent as one of the administrators there, and they have alleged conversations between him and, and, uh, and who, 
who was called Defcon on the site. So Defcon was allegedly Blake Benthal, uh-huh. and so Defcon was talking to the undercover agent, and it was Defcon who was asking his administrators, "Hey, I want you to go to these other underground websites and recruit the best drug sellers from those sites to come over here to Silk Road 2.0." Seems like a great business model. Sure, but that gave them evidence that Bla- you know allegedly Blake knew that drugs were being sold on Silk Road 2.0, and so therefore they're going to say that he was part of this conspiracy to create the site for that purpose. If you could claim you didn't know, like, you know, with Open Bazaar, their claim is, we just want to create a free marketplace. It's not being done for the purpose of having an illicit marketplace, because you could go on and you can sell anything there. And we, as the administrators, do not have control over that. So they can't say no to someone who wants to come on there and sell poison uh, on Silk Road 2.0, or I think it was the original Silk Road. I don't know if 2.0 had the same rules. The original Silk Road, you couldn't sell poison on that. You couldn't sell child pornography. There were certain things that they disallowed. Weapons were not allowed on the original Silk Road. I like that they had some standards. That's pretty nice. Yeah, but this is what disturbs me about these other other places is that the kind of things that I wouldn't want sold are going to be sold there. In theory, they could be. There would be nothing to stop that. But they're more freedom places. I mean, yeah, it's unfortunate that they've Yay. got what <laughs> that's the kind of freedom i'm looking well for. that's what we have to have if you want freedom you have to allow others to be free and that means that they will do things that you wouldn't necessarily agree with there's no freedom to poison people there's no freedom to kill people in uh you know you should be free to killings. purchase poison if you want to i mean that's as long as you don't use it to harm somebody you could harm rats with the poison you or could harm yourself you could harm yourself good point we're coming up here in moments you can take control so these new markets don't have moderation For all our loyal listeners, it's time for another giveaway. Over the next 30 days, our friends at SupernaturalSilver.com are giving away six 16-ounce Supernatural Silver liquid valued at nearly $100 per bottle or their skin and body gel priced at $49.98. All you have to do is enter and win at GCNlive.com. Hurry, contest ends December 5th. GCN can give you and your loved ones a fighting chance with the Supernatural Silver giveaway at GCNlive.com. This winter, next to water and food, you need a safe, storable fuel supply for your preparedness needs. Spare fuel is the answer. Unlike gasoline, spare fuel can be safely stored with your other supplies for many years and works in any gas-powered vehicle or backup generator. With the bitterly cold temperatures predicted for this winter, now is the best time to stock up on spare fuel. So go to GetSpareFuel.com. That's GetSpareFuel.com. GetSpareFuel.com. If you're looking for work, you know the math. There are many more applicants than openings, so you need to stand out, not blend into the blah, blah, blah your interviewer is hearing from your competition. Here's a tip. In your interview, you will be judged more by the questions you ask than the answers you give. Yes, do anticipate the obvious job interview questions and prepare concise, insightful, glass half full sounding responses. And you should interview your interviewer. Seem genuinely curious about what will help get results. With money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important. You want to cut through the clutter. For more tips for job seekers and making all the other conversations you have more productive hit survivalspeech.com i'm holland cook Kay Oliver is part of the Twayambe Women's Group in Jinja, Uganda. She gets old clothes, fixes them up, washes them, and then sells them at the Jinja market. She was quite happy with her success at her business, but realized that a sewing machine would really help her make more money to take care of her two kids. Free Talk Live helped her get that sewing machine. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound, try out the subscription, cancel at any time, coffee.freetalklive.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. 
Free Talk Live. The town wants him to stop. So he's charged with a misdemeanor and could spend six months in jail. 71 years old. Nice folks blind. there. He wouldn't let blind. That's his source of blind living. old man sell some firewood out of his front yard. Nice. So now you're looking at having to go out, get a firewood permit, which is going to cost you X amount of dollars a year, and who knows how much research to try and yep. you know figure out how to get the permit. Just then doing whatever they can to stop industry. Yeah, then you have to go and get uh, get your education so you can actually run the saw, and then you have to get a variance on your property so you can actually sell the firewood from your property. Oh, and don't forget, if you have a storefront, then you have to pay, what, five, six, $700 a month in rent, maybe $4,000 a month in rent, depending on what city you have an you occupational in. license, too. Aggression like this by these government people happens all across the country and you have to ask how much more are you willing to put up with before you finally say no free talk live seven nights a week from seven to ten eastern live on the liberty radio network at lrn.fm you're listening to the best liberty oriented audio streamed around the clock on the air and online this is the liberty radio network at lrn.fm This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything by dialing in toll-free. We're talking about the future of the marketplace, specifically the online marketplace that cannot be regulated. That's what's the proposal uh, from the folks who are programming Open Bazaar. It is also the proposal of the people who are programming an NXT-based free market client. Um, it has. I have to say, the free market client has finally given me the incentive necessary to go ahead and install the NXT uh, client. So I'll go ahead and give that a try out. Cool. See see what it's like because unlike Open Bazaar, the NXT free market people are all already open. You know, they already have some sort of existing software that people can try out. So I want to look at it. I want to see what sort of offerings there are up there. I have immediate concerns that NXT is an altcoin. It is not Bitcoin, and so therefore it won't be as popular. Uh, but you know, I could be wrong. Maybe there's going to be hundreds of listings when I install this thing. I don't know what to expect. So I'll let you know as, uh, as that develops, how that goes. But we were talking about some of the aspects of these decentralized markets, and one of them that is kind of scary to Mark is that it's, you can't moderate it. There, there's no one in charge. The people who are writing the software are on purpose not allowing themselves to have control over the system. Isn't that kind of government incentivized, though? Because, what do you mean? Well, they operate under the idea that if they restrict their market in any way, then they'll be liable to the government, you know, saying like, well, you know what's on your site. Or you know what's on your platform. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that makes so, perfectly good sense. Absolutely. So, whereas maybe they would have inserted some consumer protections into the software, now they're purposely not because it might endanger them. Well, now, wait a minute. Just because, Hold on. Just because they don't have moderation doesn't mean people aren't going to have protections. So, I, from what I understand, there's still going to be a uh, some sort of a rating system within the Open Bazaar. So, there is going to be a, an infrastructure to make sure that people are on the up and up in that if you get a bad rating, then who's going to want to do business with you, that kind of thing. But on the other hand, I guess you're right. There is less protection in that, for instance, with uh, the underground marketplaces like the Silk Road. If there was a dispute, and there were, between buyers and sellers, like, oh, such and such said they were going to ship this product, and they didn't, and they took my money. So you know, then they would bring in the moderators or the administrators to sort of I guess resolve that dispute and I don't know what kind of dispute resolution they're going to have in a system with no moderation capacity so there would be no way to really punish someone uh, from the system if those tools don't exist in the first place. I wonder if there would be a way to offer that like to create a complimentary service that would um, be an offline rating system you know so you could just say yeah, I've had this experience on the free marketplace or open bazaar mm -hmm. and then have your rating system elsewhere. You know, maybe there would be a market for that. Well, ratings might exist, but I don't think moderation will. So maybe, I don't know, we'll see, right? We don't. We still don't really know. This is early phase on both of these projects, and it's a shame that Open Bazaar wasn't ready to go because, man, what a perfect time to get some extra downloads, right? Like if, yeah. they, if they actually had their client ready to roll right now for people to just download and install in the absence of Silk Road 2.0, they would probably have hundreds if not thousands of, of new listings and 
clients and things like that. Let's go to you, uh, you with your calls and thoughts. We've got Daniel. He's in Mexico via Skype. Daniel, you're on Free Talk Live. Good evening. Hey there. So uh, back to stepping back a little bit to what you guys were saying about how you uh, determine trustworthiness of those you're doing business with on these decentralized networks. Mm-hmm. Open Bazaar is ad- addressing that. Uh, it's it's going to be a system that's actually built into Open Bazaar. Basically, it's a bit like Bitcoin in that you generate a private key that you sign everything with, right? And that that public key that that generates is your unique ID. Mm-hmm. Now, what you can one of their proposed methods of establishing reputation is either putting Bitcoin in a time lock or actually burning Bitcoin as part of establishing, bootstrapping your reputation. What does it mean to burn Bitcoin? Well, it would be like getting rid of it to to say, is that the point, Daniel, to say, I exist, I'm here, I'm creating a a profile? the The, The point of burning the Bitcoin is to show that you have some skin in the game and that you value this identity, even though it's not, you know, your actual name or anything, you value the identity that goes along with this public unique identifier. Because yeah, you you're burn not going to Bitcoin. You uh, send it to an address that doesn't Bitcoin. exist. Yes, you send it to an address that is, you know, you'll actually have an address that says, you know, this is the Open Bazaar burn address. And, uh, you know, the actual Bitcoin address is that. And your chance of actually generating that address are, you know, um, not going to happen before the sun dies. So, okay. So I see what you're saying. So would would Open Bazaar then collect that Bitcoin from that address? No, or? no, that that that's an address that there no one has yet found the public key for. Oh, okay. Gotcha. And the idea is like if there was a spammer who wanted to create a bunch of different accounts, it would be really expensive for that spammer hmm. to create multiple identities, right? That that is correct. Got it. And it, it's basically so that the the sellers and the buyers, in some cases, have some skin in the game where they actually value that identity. Now, now would this be an option for mechanism. somebody who's signing up? Like, oh, I burned my Bitcoin, so therefore I'm more legit, uh, whereas I could buy from someone who has not burned their Bitcoin and you know maybe they're just too cheap to burn their Bitcoin or they just yep. want to it, try it, it out? It's a, it's a completely optional system mm, okay. that just allows you to establish, if you choose to, a higher level of trust. Interesting. I dig it. Cool. So you you sound like you're really following this closely. Uh, the the whole open bizarre yeah, thing. I'd rather put uh, you know more Bitcoin in a time lock than I would to burn a, a certain you know a quarter of the amount of Bitcoin I put in a time lock. Personally, I mean. Yeah, sure, that makes but, sense. So you've been it, following this pretty closely, then, Daniel. Um, I've been following Open Bazaar on and off. Uh, in fact, they, uh, you guys uh, apparently were not aware because it only happened yesterday or the day before. Uh, version 3.0 has launched along with the Windows client. Really? So no, it's it's no longer you have to be a techno nerd to compile your own program from the source code in order to get it to run. What you're saying is anyone can go and download this thing now? Anyone can go and download that. However... The tour integration is not done, so it, so is, it is not, not anonymous. It is not anonymous. Okay, so fascinating. But at the very least, you could go on. Yeah, that's what I thought bu- it was the case that you could download it, but it just wasn't anonymous. Well, that's how it, it is now, apparently. But right. it wasn't that way when we were first interviewing Sam a month ago. So it sounds like they they blew something out the door here. You know, put put a usable version out for folks. He what he was describing to us was that you really had to have some programming chops to be able to compile the software. But now they've compiled it for you, and that's very exciting. So what you can do is uh, you can go on Open Bazaar and actually list items and buy items, right? Like you just you wouldn't want to buy uh, some marijuana or something like that because it's not anonymous yet. But that doesn't mean there aren't items being listed that are legal there, right? I mean, have you logged in? Have you tried it out yet? I I have not tried it out, mainly because at at this stage I have no interest in it because, well, honestly, nobody's going to mail me something to Mexico, so it doesn't really matter for me. Why not? Why wouldn't they? Uh, Because customs is uh, really annoying here, and it makes more sense for me just to... uh, uh, when you say they wouldn't mail you anything... Wait, wait, you wouldn't be mailed anything at all in Mexico or just drugs? Um, in general, if you're going to get mailed something in Mexico, you're going to use uh, what is basically kind of like uh, the Mexican version of FedEx, mm-hmm. which is uh, SFETA. Uh You're going to use that. It's, it's a courier service. 
uh, the mail service in Mexico is notoriously unreliable. You, um, from what I've well, heard, most you sellers have will sell you fifty percent delivery delivery rate in the Mexican mail system. Wow, most sellers are more than happy to send via private shipping if you're willing to pay the price for that, right? I mean, like no, you, they, they they probably are, yeah. but uh, for I do not have any needs of the things that are on uh, the these sites because, well, How? let's let's face it, the uh, prescriptions that I'm given are better and cheaper. <laughs> oh, you're saying you okay? It's my understanding there is a, lo- a bunch of legal items on uh, the site uh, at the moment, but again, I oh, haven't logged o- in. Open, so. open Bazaar will be the the stated purpose of Open Bazaar is actually to replace eBay. Right, right. So that's why I'm saying, like, you know, why not hop on and check things out? It's not an um, it's not an illegal, illicit marketplace, and at the moment, as you pointed out, it's anonymous. I'm I'm definitely curious now that you said there's actually a client out. I, I'm going to go grab that and try it out here tonight. Hey, thanks for the call, Daniel. I appreciate the heads up. 855 450 free. I'll put the link up to Open Bazaar on our Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. More coming up. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. Hi folks, Ronnie McMullen here for Life Change Tea. Healthcare is a problem, whether you're for or against Obamacare. It's a mess. My question is, who do you trust? Do you want to be told what to do, or do you want to make your own decision? My opinion, preventative maintenance. Keeping your colon clean is preventative maintenance. A little exercise, a balanced diet, and drinking Life Change Tea. It tastes great, and it helps with constipation, high cholesterol, liver problems, acid reflux, and much, much more. And with the holiday season upon us, you can get some extra tea for free. Don't wait for Obama. Make your own decision. Order now. Call us at 928-308-0408. That's 928-308-0408. Or you can log on to getthetea.com. That's getthetea.com. Ridding yourself of harmful toxins is truly preventative maintenance. Getthetea.com. Listen, you've heard the commercials before. Whether you owe 15000 or $15 million in tax debt to the IRS or state, we can help. On a never-ending payment plan? Penalties and interest killing you? Missing tax returns? Being garnished or levied? Not a problem. If you qualify, we can remove levies and garnishments within days or even hours of hiring our firm. If you've been summonsed, or even worse, receiving tax warrants in the mail, call right now. Are you a business owner with back payroll taxes? Is the IRS or state threatening to close your business you've worked so hard to build? Protect yourself and your business. Even if you've tried in the past, new guidelines could potentially qualify you today. So what are you waiting for? We can take that tax monkey off your back. Call the tax monkey now. 800-281-6030. 800-281-6030. 800-281-6030. That's 800-281-6030. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. 
Are you tired of your taxes funding endless occupations around the world? Antiwar.com is run by people who understand that wars abroad become wars at home, wars on our freedoms. Antiwar.com is dedicated to bringing you the latest in news, views, interviews, and reviews from the top movers and shakers in the anti-occupation movement. Antiwar.com has it all, from thorough foreign policy analysis to interviews with whistleblowers who used to run the military-industrial complex. Antiwar, pro-free market. That's antiwar.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. Moments remain here, but there's enough time for you with your thoughts. If you dial in right now at 855-453, that's 855-450-3733. So we're talking about these exciting new markets uh, where you can buy and sell anything, or at least that's the claim. Uh, there's a no moderation, which to some people is kind of a scary thing, but I say I'm ex- I'm excited by it. I'm I'm uh, fascinated that this is happening, and the federal government must be very very upset about this uh, because there's ultimately nothing they can really do besides target the creators. Of these new softwares, uh, the we met Sam. Uh, this guy's trying to create a an open source exchange medium yep. where uh, you know I mean it, 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 he can't decide. It's like making a gun. You can't choose whether or not somebody shoots somebody with it. Right. This guy's got a family. This guy's got kids. Um, this you know he's not exchanging drugs. But they may go after him for it. He's well, right. Nothing would stop them from c- trying to come up with something, concoct some sort of charges. But he's in a much better place legally than anybody operating one of these centralized drug marketplaces underground because all Sam's doing is creating a tool. He's creating a tool that anyone can use to sell anything they want any to anyone anywhere in the world. And uh, they don't have to ask permission to do it. There's no approval process. You just get started with it. And so he's got that plausible deniability wherein, you know, he doesn't know what you're listing. He's not approving them. And he's not getting a commission off of it either, which is another thing. There's no fees with Open Bazaar, from what I understand. So the programmers, they're known publicly, unlike this NXT free market, which is charging fees and the programmers are hidden. Open Bazaar, it's completely open. And I think that's another safety feature for him. Well, I'm a big fan of this guy and anyone trying to create a freer market. It reminds me of the quote from V for Vendetta that Mm. ideas are bulletproof. It's not about the people who are running these businesses or these organizations. It's about the idea that free people are going to be able to trade with each other without permission. Yeah, That's revolutionary and that can't be stopped. I'm so excited by it. So we'll continue as we learn more. We'll tell you. First, we go to the, uh, your phone calls here. We've got Sean listening in Tupelo. You're on Free Talk Live, uh, tuned in via WKMQ. Hey, Sean. Or Sean, rather. Hello? Hello? Hey, you're on the radio. Go ahead. Yeah, this is this is what I want to know. You know, when y'all was talking about the drug charges, right? Yes, sir. And like when you say... The United States do have the harsher, the harsher punishment, you know, because we live in Tupelo, Mississippi, and man, I'm talking about they take drug selling real serious, you know. Mm-hmm. But my question is, how can somebody kill somebody? How can you kill somebody and probably do about five years max? But if you go out and sell some cocaine, you know, to provide for your family, don't get me wrong, it's wrong. It's wrong to do. No, I there's nothing wrong with selling here. drugs. I don't see anything there's wrong no- with it. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. Is it still wrong, man? It's still wrong, right? No, it's not. No, you're just selling drugs to another consenting adult. I mean, there's nothing wrong with buying and selling things. I mean, the only thing that's that it is is it's illegal. And there's been a lot of things over time that have been illegal that aren't necessarily wrong. Just because the law says uh, that something is wrong doesn't mean it's actually wrong, right? That makes sense. Yeah. But- you know, but but like you say, you can go out here and and sell this stuff, and then you know you you make your money, but you only really doing it just provide your fa- for your family or whatever. You know they don't pay you nothing on these jobs, no way these days anyway. But you know it's just the fact that I got a partner that got 18 years, and for what he had sold, it wasn't even worth 18 years. But you got somebody over here to take somebody's life. 
Oh yeah. And he might he might not do nothing but about five. About it's crazy. Eighteen months. And there's no there's no explaining it. There's no logic behind it. I mean, it's just sure insanity. There is. It's the incentives of the power hungry politicians who just promise their constituents more and more tough on crime legislation. But do people really want to see those constituents? Do they really want to see a drug seller staying in prison longer than a murderer? I mean, really? Is that what people are demanding? That seems unbelievable. Yeah, I don't like it happens a lot. But it has happened. It certainly has happened. There was a guy in Florida who got 25 years for a, a possession of prescription pills that weren't his. He was in a wheelchair. <laughs> and now they now they crack hard down on that in Tupelo, Mississippi, too. You know, if that if your name is not on that bottle, and it might not be yours. It might you might can say, hey, it's my grandma. She just left it in my car. But no, don't say that. They'll still, uh, they'll still not uh, say that. Yeah, better, you're better off not saying anything uh, to the police. Yeah. yeah. The, the the question you ask is, officer, are you conducting an investigation? And if the officer says yes, then you say, speak to my attorney. If he says no, then he says that I have nothing to talk to you about. Hey, Sean, thanks for the call tonight, man. I definitely share your concerns. Uh, it's bewildering to me as well, and it's definitely something that needs to be looked at with sentencing reform. I mean, I think most people would agree that that violent people are the ones who should be doing the time. If anyone's going to do time, it shouldn't necessarily be the drug dealers. But drug dealers have been demonized, so maybe that's a factor. Is, you know, Drug dealers have been pointed to as like a uh, terrible people, bad human beings. But as Shun was pointing out, many of them just want to put food on their family's table too, just like anybody else. I think there's something of a cultural shift, though. As At the beginning of the show, you were saying, oh, people don't want to look at the jail. They don't want to look at the punishment that's happening because mm -hmm. then they might say, oh, I have some moral problems with this. But there's a cultural shift happening in that there are so many people in jails in the U.S. that we've got popular shows now, like mm. Orange is the New Black. And whether people like it or not, they're being, they, they have to confront this reality that we've got a lot of people in jails. Got to do something about that. Well, that is one of the, uh, I guess, positive sides of arresting everybody in the, in the country is that eventually you're going to know someone who got arrested, right? And so it's it's easy for the respectables to keep themselves separated from the jail and the kind of people that are in the jail. But when more people keep getting sort of churned into this criminal just justice system, then that means it's more and more likely that someone you know, even the respectables, the people driving the Lexuses and the, you know, the driving, you know, with the fancy cars and the golf clubs and things like that, even they are likely now to have a son or a daughter or a grandson or somebody getting picked up for something. And that can be a change in perspective almost instantly. Yeah, of course, it's more personal when you know somebody who's in jail or you have a friend. But I'm talking about the entertainment industry where there are like, I don't know, half dozen of these shows that feature reality of what it's like on the inside are they realistic and, though uh well they claim to be reality shows. i haven't seen I mean, it they're, I, they're popular in jails i know they, they liked watching it while i was in i have heard the orange is the new black is a good show but i haven't watched it no i, I haven't watched i don't wa i do not watch shows like that prison, um, prison I, shows yeah i mean well, what about like lock up these are these no, are no, shows where i don't watch them <laughs> okay. um, let's be clear right. i don't watch them lock okay. up the movie with sylvester stallone no the there's 90s? no there's like modern shows that feature actual prisoners it's hmm. not like fictional stories oh, like really? orange is the new black is like fictional stories about this this fictional prison but this is uh this is a show and there are lots like it where they feature real prisoners and what it's hmm. like when they get a, a shakedown through their room and uh what their different jobs are well so. all that's interesting to guys like you the uh the, the, the guys had half stepped through county jail um i spent eight and a half years in i have no desire to get like sort of in the back of that mind frame that uh, well that, no this is interesting to the average joe these I'm are with on you, that it's fine, that it's interesting. Uh, but all i'm saying is is that every time I've seen one of these prison things, what they do is they present all the bad things that happened to me in the course of eight and a half years in, in 45 minutes or whatever yeah. it is. But wait a minute. Now, with these reality series, imagine, I'm sure that the guards are on their best behavior. I mean, the guards aren't being like thugs on camera, are they? No, the, the guards are very much the yeah. heroes in these oh, shows. Boy. Let's go to uh, James in Arizona via Skype. Hello, James. Derek J. Oh, boy. Uh, oh, boy. Open mind that you have. Given the non-existence of a super richy rich prison industrial complex reformer, phil philanthropist, let's call him, might I suggest to you, absent a pipe world dreamer, 
uh, bong smoke uh, dope den that you live in. Uh, <laughs> that solution to the courtesy, the, the solution to the. Uh, Your sentence the structure criminal... confuses me. I know it's supposed to be. Uh, Whatever, I know you're confused. You have to think a second time for once in your dope smoking life. But anyway, might I suggest to you that the criminal rehabilitation uh, is, seated, is seated right next to you, courtesy of the free people of the state of Florida. But then again, only a moral moron might suggest that selling drugs like Coke is there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, Minister Edge, how are you doing today? All's well. Every second. What's wrong every with second, selling cocaine? Every second you spent behind bars, by the way, you got off easy, if you ask me. Okay. Yeah. What, I, what's I wrong with selling cocaine? Now. Yeah. So I'd like to know. I suggest the state of Florida has something going for them, and criminals like that steal. T have you ever had two hundred grand yeah. stolen from me? Oh, I'm Wait. so sorry, but we're out of time. He didn't want to have a conversation. He just wanted to uh, speak from the pulpit there for a little bit. Naughty, you naughty. You can do that boys. on Free Talk Live. Yeah, you can. Uh, but I really wanted to know, what's wrong with selling cocaine? What's the crime? What, what's the, uh, what is immoral about selling that? Selling alcohol, selling aspirin, selling yeah. cigarettes. So if you want to answer that question, call tomorrow night and do it. In the meantime, check out Derek J at DerekJ.me and more at freetalklive.com. Nothing. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. The latest episode of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, November 10th, 2014. Silver is trading at $15.64 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,168 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $369. Antiwar.com reports tensions are on the rise between Ukraine and the Eastern Rebels again, with the city of Donetsk this